Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The FIFA Women's World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Officials in this game are Riley Marshall and Jones, New Zealand, Scotland and England. Waikato are looking for the win to put them into the top four, and there they are. It's goal scorer number 18 is Casey Chaplin, opening goal within the very first minute of the game. Rapids. Rapids ball on the sideline. Good 
good bit of opening play. Good save there from Percy Fish, the keeper for Hawks Bay. Fish had a really busy game last night up against the uh, Surge. Found on every part of the court, yeah. right up to Pivo. Good save there from Stellard. Stellard uh, had, had a performance uh, to be reckoned with last night against the Surge. Had the luxury of commentating that game. Score is still 1 0 to the Waikato team. And a foul for the Waikato team as the first. So it doesn't look like there's any scoring on the uh, screen at the moment and timing, so we're going to have to go by the match clock. And uh, yeah, 17 56 left on the clock. And Waikato up 1 0. There from the defence, Maxwell Eriksson. Nice idea there, getting the ball up court as quick as possible, but uh, unfortunately Stellard was a little bit lagging on that one. Still feeds out to the court. Nice bit of set play in the back there, just to get the ball rolling. And here's an opportunity. Well protected by Berman Stallard. Even Martin the captain has a shot and uh, well kept. Forced out there. Hawks Bay ball. As you see, uh, Percy Fish coming out to the flank. And dropping back as soon as the opportunity uh, wasn't there for him. minutes left in this uh, first half. Players there, drifting in motion, give himself the opportunity, but well defended there from the Waikato team. Looks like the Waikato team getting ready to put some subs on. Same with Hawks Bay, they're lining up some subs as well. Good defence from the skipper. Corner ball. 
Good strong defence there from the skipper. And they hold their line nicely. Hawks Bay ball. Nice touch off. Waikato's player, Benjamin K. Bought it. So it's uh, early morning here at Waikato, uh, the Rest Trust Arena. Uh, hopefully for those of you that are up early this morning, you're enjoying what you see in the game. And number two from Hawke's Bay, uh, draw a goal there, Harry Anderson to level it up at one all. The 15-52 left in the game. Uh, first half. Good strong goal. One all. Flowing game this morning. It doesn't look like there's too much uh, of a lag in this game. Looks like the players are here to play for a win. Hawksway uh, fighting for a win after um, only picking up one so far in the tournament. And uh, Waikato sitting on fifth at the moment. Uh, on equal points is the Canterbury team, but on a uh, lesser goal differential. Night. Um, it looks like he's fit and well after limping off though last night, so that's a good sign for Hawks Bay. with is the uh, goalkeeper Percy Fish being out here on the flank and then he had to drive back Anderson uh, put his body on the line there to protect the opportunity of an open goal Last game yesterday, yeah, he ended in a four-all draw against Canterbury. One of those uh, hard-fought physical games. On the 
uh, opportunity for attack down the side there. There we have 13 21 left on the game clock, and the score is 1 all. Waikato scored early, and Fox Bay uh, picked up the equalizer around the 15 50 left in the first half. Right. early this morning and uh, we've got a number of games to play today um, but it is day three of the 2023 F Ford Futsal Super League and we have seen quite a number of exciting games this weekend already so Monday a bit of Monday Blues from the defence of the Waikato team. Another opportunity for a corner. on for the Waikato team. Casey Sharp is back on the, on the court. Connor Float is in there too. And Skip is a knife in the back on. Hawks Bay have three subs on the sideline as well. Ready to go, we're headed in the moment. Well defended by Hawks Bay there. Opportunity on the break. But well defended by Now they have an opportunity to counter. So just for reference to those that have just joined us, uh, Waikato are playing from right to left on our screen and they scored first in the first uh, couple of minutes of the game. Uh, Hawks Bay playing from left to right and they scored minutes 15, 52 left in the half. It's fairly even position wise this game. Opportunity there for Sharpling, but uh, just couldn't get that on target. Goalie position. And just waiting for a ball to return to the court. Right <laughs> over on the attack here. And oh, that was a great cross, but no one was there on the back post to finish that goal opportunity off. Yeah, 
just uh, got the uh, <laughs> power manager just walking past, giving us a good morning. I didn't see a coffee come in, though. Nice bit of play there, doing the defence from the skipper from Waikato. Hawks Bay covering nicely and setting quite a tight zonal. But Waikato managed to break that zonal and unfortunately his shot was off target. For this game. stage of the first half. Uh, here's an opportunity for Waikato to put the ball into the back of the net. And nice attempt at goal, hit the crossbar and over the top. So there's a foul there on the court. And just as well for Hawks Bay, why had a had a bit of a numerical advantage there attacking the goal. And just on the foul count, it's um, two apiece. For the first half. For those that haven't watched much of the futsal, uh, each team get five fouls before it goes to a direct shot at goal. Uh, each half. Bay with uh, having the keeper out on the left flank and having Ericsson right in their, their positions as zone uh, with an opportunity for scoring goals. Seems to be quite a preferred play from Hawks Bay if you have the keeper out there. Certainly racks up the mileage of uh, uh, Percy Fish. Good save there from him. And an opportunity uh, from Begging. Seconds after this first half, and the skipper scores. Ethan Martin. So 
So the score is 2-1 to Waikato. to counter the counter. Yeah, thank you, Auckland Traffic. Just getting the better of us this morning, and I was so looking forward to the start of this game between the Rapids and the Hawks Bay side, and uh, clearly, clearly. Well, I could have scored two classic goals, one in the first couple of minutes and one just uh, within the last minute. Yeah, Hawks Bay scored uh, with 15.52 on the clock uh, left from this half. It's right. been a, uh, quite a tight physical game. Yeah, it's, it's um, I guess, one thing that both sides will be factoring in now is maybe just the level of fatigue, having played a number of games this weekend, which will be at such a high level of intensity as well. So who's got the fitness chance here? Pava looking to turn with the shot. Great defence again, and somehow Hawks Bay find a way out of that one. Such is the... Quality. He's good, Vava, isn't he? He's a guy that's very good at holding up the defence. He, he, he's not afraid to switch positions too. You find him in that pivot role and then he'll find him drop himself back in that fixo as well. So he's a good target up front, Vava. Yeah. He's a very smart uh, foot solo, that's for sure. So how's your morning apart from the traffic this morning, Matt? Well, <laughs> coffee was OK. No, it was being, well, I'm a resident of Murawai, so I'm homeless at the moment. And oh. So I'm having to go and um, live with my mother in the North Shore. I never thought I'd be living with mum at this. So we're living in Nilford, and we've got the kids at Waimauka, and then trying to get across here. And all the um, traffic apps were telling me, Mark, you're fine. It'll be 30-something minutes. And, yeah, and, I then, got it on, and then I got you. on Green Height, <laughs> and suddenly... All hell broke loose, so yeah, not great. Not great for your anxiety when you've got a live commentary to do, but anyway, we are here and we are thoroughly looking forward to this, and thank you for carrying this one. No worries, uh, it's my pleasure. And so now we continue to see the white Kato Rapid side in their candy striped uniform, number 19 on the ball, Benjamin Borden, one of the Australians. So A fairly even game this one, I would have thought. So I'm just happy to be patient here at the moment. Are the Rapids? Yeah, lovely little piece of trickery. It is a game that very much encourages innovation. And there we go. Continuing that skills is Borden, the Australian. But high press defence coming here from Hawks Bay forcing the Waikato to play inside their own half and putting the pressure on. I saw the opportunity to break the press with that high ball, which was uh, quite a smart play from them. Well, that is the danger, isn't it? When you play that high press, yeah. Okay. Certainly created opportunities in the backcourt. So a little bit of a shot, a little bit wide, but certainly be keeping the Hawks Bay keeper, Liam Percy Fish, on his toes. He's been a busy player this tournament. So far, far again. Oh, good skills, but well, well picked up. Brings a lot of physicality, does Cameron Emerson. He's very, very good oh, in that fixer role. Of talk. There's a bit of talk going on here. The referees today are Anthony Riley, Ian Marshall and Richard Jones. Just... Telling them just to calm it down. And we are... Cameron Emerson is very good. He does play well in that fixo role. He's a big man. He shuts down that middle a lot. So sides have to play 
a little bit more left or right. Lovely little through ball, but just couldn't quite find his intended receiver. Looking to just try and thread the needle, and that intended receiver was Caden Rogers. And Rogers now drops back. It's like a very good defensive setup, though, by Hawks Bay at the moment. What are you seeing here defensively from Hawks Bay? So in a nice uh, tight zone all when they're in their space, but then they push up into quite a high press, which unfortunately can lead to opportunities for Waikato for them. Yeah. And here's an opportunity now yeah, for Waikato. Looking to play that fifth man. Can they get the shot in? But desperation stuff. Good defense from Harry Anderson for Hawks Bay. Having to scramble across there. So high risk. Yeah. High reward for the Hawks Bay side. Bringing out... Percy Fish to act almost as that fifth man, but coming against them, the shot from distance. A well saved there from Fish. Now Vava. I'd like to see Vava shoot a little bit more. He's very good on the ball, but tends to be a little hesitant at times. So gets play back underway. Looks to switch it immediately. A little one-on-one, -on -one, but well read. Picked up nicely from both Anderson and Riley. One thing I noticed there with the Hawks Bay team there is that they seem to, as they drop deeper, they go quite flat in that front row. So it does obviously put a lot more pressure in trying to break that line, but uh, Waikato have managed to break it a few times and obviously have a couple of goals to show for it. Yeah, they play with pace, don't they, Waikato? They're just very much that one-touch side, not afraid. If they see the opportunity, they do take it. And, shot and there's one of them. them. Yep, and there is Vava. And from Zimbabwe. And now the fish looks to go long, but picked off by Vava. Can't quite control it. They get back desperately. Lovely little bit of footwork. But great intent there being shown by Jacob Riley for Hawks Bay. Busy little futsal player. There's an opportunity for Hawks Bay. Oh, no. right, referees say play on. Low, and our chance. It's a three on three one, one here if they can move it quickly. Vava waits. The shot comes oh, from great distance. Save. And that's a game. Vava this time with the left foot. Can't get it. That is brilliant from Liam Percy Fish. Under all sorts of pressure. They had the break and they had the three on one. They utilized it and moved it beautifully. Yep, and Fish, uh, Percy Fish uh, held his place really nicely as usual. He's a really well uh, rounded goalie, really, isn't he? Seems to know where he needs to be and puts his players in the same zones he needs them in for defence. And uh... and now and here's an opportunity for the counter. Yeah, he's good. I like to see him. Listen. He's got that physicality, doesn't he? He does. Certainly does. Has that size to him and. Um, not afraid to run into players if need be. Well, it also allows them to lean a little bit more on defenders, doesn't it? And yeah, you see a lot of that just holding up the defender, just waiting for players to come forward, and every team seems to have one. But it's just that ability to, you know, to be able to slow time down and know that you've got time on the ball. Yep. That's what the great players seem to be able to do. Now, go okay, back across court. Well held out there from a bit of a white press going on there. And now they're back into their zonal and uh, see how Hawks Bay hold this position. Yeah, they've got to hold their shape, don't they? Yeah. Just and as this game goes on, the tee kicks in, that comes down to concentration. Oh, lovely little ball too here. Great innovation, and great oh, shot and just wide. And but, yeah, great opportunity there. Uh, Unfortunately, Eriksson wasn't there on the back post where he could have uh, slotted a nice little goal. Yeah, and I think the shot came from Dixon, did it, in the number 11 shirt. Yeah, George yeah. Dixon. So, and yeah, now, yeah, they're just playing with such pace. And now this chance here. They look to try and come through the middle, but he can't do it on his own. Needs some support. And again, here comes this three-on-two situation. Feeds the pass. The shot comes again. And Fish is there. Now another opportunity, and they clear. And But it is very much... The Waikato Rapids, who have 
at the moment, the ascendancy, they have the momentum. Yeah, they're playing a lot more with um, support play on the rare runs as well, whereas Hawks Bay seem to be right one out. Yeah, just not pressing high enough on offence, are they? They're sort of sitting back a little bit defensively and maybe just need to play with a bit more positivity. Just haven't had the ball. And now looking to switch play. The Hawks Bay beaten badly yesterday by Auckland City. But what, particularly what we saw from Cameron Emerson was that he was very effective early in shutting Auckland City down through the middle but they couldn't just rely purely on him. And as the game wore on and fatigue levels kicked in, City eventually opened them up and then the floodgates well and truly opened up. Here's yeah. an opportunity for a counter, and well protected from Ethan. Yeah, brilliant. That's really good there again from Ethan Martin, their captain, with that sliding tackle. Another chance here, good clearance from Riley Kleinert. Out there. A couple of substitutes for the Hawks Bay team. Sharplin back on. Um, yep, Stalard back on. Stalard's had uh, a bit of a quiet game today, unlike the game against the Surge last night, where he was everywhere <laughs> doing as much as he could to give the uh, team an opportunity. How did that game end up? Uh, it was 6 3 to the Surge in the end. Six it was three. a bit of a high scoring second half when both teams had obviously. Run out of energy to defend. 3-0 um, up at half time for the surge and yeah, three all second half. Yeah, just needs a little bit more support here, does Cameron Emerson. Seems to be a little bit more of a defensive based unit Hawks bait. Just lack a little bit of enterprise perhaps. Rapids. I mean, I think a lot's in their name, and is that they do play rapidly. And looking to try and play quickly. So the score is two goals to one. If you have just joined us. Just over two minutes remaining in this first half here on day three of this Ford Futsal Super League. Yep. One thing we see with the uh, Rapids is uh, having Jet on board as their head coach this year. Yeah. Um, he certainly has brought a, a fast version of the game to the, to the region. He brings a bit of emotion too on the sideline. He does. Being warned a little bit by the referees, he might have even got. I think sure he got, he got a, a yellow yesterday. card yesterday, did yep, he? Yeah. But yep. I, I was saying, I, I, look, worst, I've done a little bit of high performance coaching in individual sports, and even that's hard enough. I just think, boy, they've got to have the shortest lifespan, don't they? Professional coaches oh. in major sport. I mean, it's 100%. not, it's not good for the health. <laughs> yep. But you know what? We do it for the fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, as being a coach myself is like the seeing the girls in our case that um, playing out of their skin and, and putting the patterns together that we put in training and watching how they perform as a unit. You know, you, you can't ask for more as a coach. No, that's what you can do. Here goes Vava now, looking to try and take it down this right-hand side. Still in control, the shot and comes, an and there is the third one. Well, it's been building, and it came, and it started through some very good defence at the other end, and then it was Vava, and then it fell into the hands of Casey Sharplin, and Sharplin, well, this time just simply too good, and Liam Percy Fish, well, he just couldn't get across to it. And so it is the Rapids who now lead by three goals to one with just a minute and a half remaining in this first half. But brilliant defence at one end. They turned that into attack. Vava, whose ability to hold up that ball was key. And he came across and Sharplin making it three. And now Hawks Bay has some serious questions to ask of themselves. So, yeah. so I just want a, a little shout out to one of the uh, power players today. It's her 18th birthday, Eve Mischewski, the daughter of the head coach. Coach, yeah. Yeah, so her 18th birthday today. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just goes to show that we've got such a young squad. Yeah, pretty impressed too that by that young Stevie Lee Tiller. Yeah, she's playing amazing. She's a good little futsal player, big future here. And yeah. It is. It's about now building on that depth, isn't it? Creating the depth, bringing that nucleus of players together, having those seasons, and then eventually you can hopefully challenge the likes of what looks appears to be a very good Canterbury side on the they, other uh, side. Yeah, certainly a very strong oh, opportunity well, so. there. Yeah, really good chance coming from the 
Mustafa for well Hawks Bay. Well saved from Steele there as well. And he'd been alert to the fact that the play was happening right there in front of him. His defence didn't block his, his vision, which is a pretty lucky thing for him, really. But yeah, um, another couple of players that stand out. Obviously, our uh, keepers. Um, they, oh. haven't, they had an amazing day yesterday. Yeah, oh, the goalkeeping's been superb. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's almost the first play you pick, isn't it? Yes. It's very not dissimilar to ice hockey in a lot of ways, where if you want to be good, good in the NHL, you've got to just have a great keeper. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just amazed at the athleticism and the way they can throw themselves around on these harder surfaces. The ball is not, you know, as much heavier than a standard football if yep. you're not aware with futsal. And, and it is drilled at times, absolutely drilled. And they just throw themselves around. Also a lot of um, field hockey skills in it too, the way they tend to use their legs a lot more than, say, what you'd see in the standard goalkeeper in football. Yep, absolutely. You're yeah, not good for the groin. I don't <laughs> think I'd cope too well at 50-odd years of age. The... Uh yeah, I mean, it's bad enough being in our 40s when we, <laughs> when we actually uh, roped in to keep. And there it is, and it is half time, and it is the Rapids who lead Hawks Bay by three goals to one, and what has been a really good performance, but for the Hawks Bay side, well, it's just an opportunity for them to come out in that second half and got to try and score early, try and put a little bit of pressure back on the Rapids, just see how they deal with a little bit of adversity. Yeah. Well, Mark, I mean, I have to love and leave you, mate, but, uh, hey, thank you, for, thank you for carrying the ship. <laughs> thank you for carrying the ship. I tell you what, Auckland traffic, eh? Yeah. Uh, I, Let's I was... get rid of the orange cones, I say. Let's oh. get rid of the orange cones. They're everywhere. I always say that if you're going to redo the New Zealand flag, you have an orange cone and a pothole. That would be that pretty much sums up this up. country at the moment, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, anyway. so it should be, uh, if for the rugby team in Auckland, it should be the Auckland potholes, maybe. Um, yep. Yeah. But, hey. Oh, the orange cones. Yeah, yeah. Well, the orange cones, yeah. 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 Anyway, it no is worries. what it is. Well, you have a great day. No, I appreciate that. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for carrying that early on. But anyway, we are on board and looking forward to having your company throughout this morning here on day three of the Ford Futsal Super League. We'll have a little bit of a break while the two teams get some instructions, and we'll be back shortly for the second 20 minutes. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau. Working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. So referees are Anthony Riley, Ian Marshall and Richard Jones. Just running through those results for you yesterday. So it was Southern United who got up over the Waikato Rapids 4-2. Then it was the Capital Futsal. Beating Bay of Plenty by four goals to one. Hawks Bay getting beaten by Auckland City 11 1. Papakura City going down to Capital Futsal by three goals to one. And we had Waikato Bay of Plenty Power beating Central Futsal three goals to two. It was a four all draw between Canterbury and the Waikato Rapids. And then Papakura two. Canterbury three. Hawks Bay Futsal went down to Bay of Plenty by six goals to three. Canterbury. Dragons went down to Auckland City by five goals to three. And Waikato Bay of plenty of power ending up beating Southern United by six goals to two. But we're back underway. And a great opportunity. Great goal. That is a brilliant start. A brilliant start for the Hawks Bay side. The long ball against the run of play. Something slightly unconventional. And it was Mustafa using the head to suddenly peg one back and bring this game to a 3-2 margin. That is what they needed. And just a little bit more urgency now. Emerson and Mustafa. And now they've got Cozens on, so they've got a good group of court players here. And Zemerson again looking for another long ball. This time just a little bit too much weight on it. Don't see a lot of goals off the head. And that was one of the finest. Tell you what, the Hawks Bay would love to try and nab one now. Uh, it certainly would lift the energy levels. If in fact, fatigue does start to kick in. Chance here, picked off in the middle now. Cozens looks to come forward, goes on his own, needs a bit of support, will bring it back. In fact, this is Cozens, so. Stallard, in fact, in the number 11 shoot, it was that initial playmaker, Vava at the other end, trying to get a foot on it, trying to control it. Couldn't manage to do so. And so, Cozens comes across to Emerson. Emerson to Stallard, another looking long ball this time, well read in defence. here at the Rapids. It's good from Vava, lovely trickery. That's what he does bring. Expect the unexpected from him. One of the better players with ball at foot. His ability to hold on to the ball. And now chance comes. Nick Cozens threw himself in defence and now oh, brought down. Not intentional, but the foul will go against the Rapids. 
Simon Stellard hits terra firma and hits it reasonably hard, but stands up and brushes it off. Now Stellard. They're a lot busier now. A chance comes to make it three all. Good save from Patrick Steele in goal. Steele will be wanting more from his team at the moment. Just coming up. A little bit of sleep and Hilch Bay. Oh, Fava, lovely little ball. Brilliant. And they replace it. And now the shot, one of the great. About to say that could have been one of the great goals. Brilliant cohesion between Fava. And number 19, Borden of the Australian, Ben Borden. Both with the little back heel passes. It was almost a case of, yeah, that's pretty good. I'll show you that I can do it a little bit better. And it was a lovely worked one too. Oh, just muscle their way, Musafa. Had no choice but to come out, steal. Oh, really good open game here of Futsal. And Emerson now bringing his presence to the fore in the number 10 shirt. The Rapids are going to need to concentrate now because there has been a momentum shift in favour of Hawke's Bay. I think with Hawks Bay, they've got a really good nucleus of experienced players and maybe just lack a little bit of depth on the bench, which will come in time, which will come with experience. Oh, five up. Oh, this time, though, well read. Really well played here by Stallard, but he loses the ball. Manages to get back in defence, though, as Eaglestone. And now the shot does come. Unselfish and misses. And he knows the opportunity was there to tie it up. And Jacob Riley has his hands in his head and says, I should have done a little bit better. But boy, that is good futsal. the needle. Vava. This time he's worked over. Now they have the opportunity to go the south. Has a shot with the left foot. A cannon of a shot too from Eaglestone. And it created another very good save from Patrick Steele. A lovely little lob. Something slightly different. Another shot. The deflection comes. They'll pick up the corner. This time it was Harry Anderson from distance. And the number two shirt for Hawks Bay. Oh, through ball over the top. Great intent. Again, good piece of keeping there from Percy Fish in goal. And now looking to try and slow it down. Support comes, but it's the Rapids who come away with it through Martin, their captain, and almost unexpectedly a goal from Maxwell Erickson. Not sure that he was necessarily <laughs> intending to have a shot on goal, but almost by default. And it happened, so another set piece here. Interesting to see the defensive set up here from Hawks Bay. So I'll go back, they look to come across. A little bit ambitious now. They've been up that chance one on one. Can he just turn and hit it first time? He can't, but another good opportunity. This time for Jacob Riley again. Right down the line. So 
it'll be Fava with the kick in. Because on the far side, he does have Casey Sharplin, but chance now. Looking to try and do some stuff with lovely footwork. Great through ball, great chance. Gets the cross across, but Percy Fish comes right out of the goal and to that side and just shuts any angle down. But it'll be another set piece opportunity and they look to play it quickly and it'll be a case of deja vu they'll do it all over again the left foot chance comes and somehow Hawks Bay scramble managed to keep the score at Three goals to two, just the one goal in it in favour of the Rapids. Another cross, another corner. Harry Anderson, been good in defence in the number two shirt for Hawks Bay. Just a young man, big future. A lovely bit of thing here. Now they look to try and mix it up. He gets the shot with the left foot. Can he hold on to it? They can. Vavas there, he turns the trickery. Couldn't quite get the goal done, but that is the danger. Just that ability to hold up that defender to turn his back and use the Suki skills. They said, come back, we'll play that again. Referees today, Anthony Riley, Ian Marshall and Richard T. Jones. Referees being excellent throughout the tournament. Just want to acknowledge the sponsors too, Razine, for the Golden Boot. McDonald's and Ford, of course, the principal partner. Oh, and from nowhere they've scored. And sometimes it can be moments like that where perhaps it's not the cannon you expect. And you find a way through the traffic. The goalkeeper and the defence, well, they don't quite have a clear line of sight. And this time it was the captain, Ethan Martin, who scores. And suddenly it's back to a two-goal buffer. And another chance coming. Oh, did that hit the upright, did it? Wow, that was a, an absolutely tremendous strike. It's almost out of Liverpool Stephen Gerrard playbook. So just over 14 minutes remain. Now this is at about that threshold yesterday where the Hawks Bay just started to fall apart a little bit against Auckland City and then the floodgates really did open. This is where now the next three or four minutes key passage for them. Need to hold on to the ball. Need to believe in themselves. And need to find a way to score at the other end. That's good. Now the chance comes. And can they? They just put it wide. But good enterprise being shown, playing it quickly, just one touch futsal. The lob shot controls it nicely and has a bit of a crack. Great skill set, isn't it? That time by Alex Dana Eaglestone. Sort of probably hoping that perhaps Patrick Steele, the goalkeeper, was off his line and might have just been able to lob it or dip it behind the keeper. Yep. Rapid. Oh, brilliant. Lovely. Oh, I've got to say, the quick thinking again from Vava, just his ability to be able to make decisions under pressure. He could have somehow tried to score that himself but he decided to use his head and play that one too another goal almost came for the rapids big workload the man from zimbabwe Ericsson, in fact, was the number 10 at the moment. So it was Ericsson, I should say, who was superb in terms of 
the earlier play. So Ericsson here, pressing high in that pivot roll, waiting for that opportunity, waiting to see if he can break loose and get that one-on-one, -on -one, but sitting back there in the fix out is Alexander Eaglestone. He has a bit of a brick wall defensively. So it's a really nice max up, match up between Maxwell Eriksson and Alexander Eaglestone. And now we will see a change in the lineup for new players coming on, including Vava. Across the far side, number 19 as well. Ben Borden, number four, Aiden Robson on. That ball red, well picked off in defence. Now they decide to come up the line, looking to just out muscle his opponent, but a little bit of shove in the back. So Cameron Emerson, not afraid to use his physical stature. Four Hawks bait. build up gently through the back. Father, three players on him now. If he can get free, it'll automatically create the overlap. And that's what he's good at, is just drawing those defenders, drawing two across, creating an overlap elsewhere. So the Rapids through Connor Cleety, and with the shot, just wide. Again, looking for the chance, and another hitter. This time, just not enough on it. Well read by Patrick Steele in goal. Goes on his own, has a shot this time with the left foot, just skies it over the top. Looked like he certainly had Aiden Robson out to his left, but he was well marked and he saw it and quickly decided that perhaps the best chance was to go himself. Just under 11 minutes remaining in this game. It is the Rapids leading Hawks Bay by four goals to two. Lovely little turn, lovely little show and go here from Robson. Robson goes on his own, picks up the corner. Really, really good futsal from this Hawks Bay talisman. Now, can they convert, though? They look for the chance. The shot does come. Blocked. And now the Rapids look to break out. Now they'll slow it down and just bring it out from the back. Take some more valuable seconds off the clock. Shot clock won't really come into play just yet with over ten and a half minutes remaining, but and now a little one two. Oh great skills, just couldn't quite get there again. That man Kellen Robson. skills a bit of interference they come back it's the right call so Borden Vava he lets it go this time decides to run forward into that pivot roll couldn't quite get on the end of it but great enterprise now chance at the other end here but picked off Great defence from both players. Has to go on his own. Does he pull the trigger? He has the shot. Had no real choice then, did Cameron Patterson. 
And at the other end, they're going to get caught out, and they do. Superb. Great finish. Cameron Emerson. In fact, my apologies, it is Maxwell Erickson who scores. And isn't he thrilled? But end-to-end -end action. Let's confirm it. Might have, in fact, been Casey Sharpling. I do apologise. Sometimes the numbers are just quite... can just be difficult to pick up in the moment. Yeah, so I can confirm it was Casey Sharpling with the goal. And on the ball at the moment. And so 5-2 the score. Almost against the run of play. But really nicely work move. Very much their goals are coming through team cohesion where arguably perhaps the Hawks Bay goals have come more through sort of moments of individual brilliance and a little bit more of the element surprise. We saw a very good header to start the second half off a long ball. Now they look to turn, but the defence too strong. I do feel for Dylan Cozens because he puts his heart and soul out here in the number seven shirt. the needle but to no avail I think both teams would be quite happy for this just a goalkeeper here Patrick Steele just to slow things down and reset give everybody just a chance to reset and try and find that shape both offensively and defensively no oh, handball so come back not intentional but certainly was a handball Lovely little through ball, but well read in the finish. Again by Simon Stallard for Hawks Bay. Once again, great intent being shown. Try and by Benjamin Borden, the Australian import. change their lines so doesn't get any easier with Maxwell Erickson now coming back on for the Waikato Rapids it's like for like isn't it when you look at Erickson and then Fava in terms of their physique and their style of play and they've sort of got similar haircuts too so Ethan Martin Another set piece, another opportunity. And little lob picks it up. Ericsson, does he have a go? Does he pull the trigger? No, happy to play it, allows it. And that is superb. And this time it is Ethan Martin who does score. But great play from Maxwell Ericsson. Just held it up. Looked. For his fellow teammate, who just pulled the trigger and suddenly it is 6 2. Oh, lost it. Chance. Ericsson. Oh, just that last little touch. Here is Cousins. Holding, holding, holding. Then just decides to put it in once he knows his defenders have come back. More than happy to allow 
the Rapids the kick in. And another shot, and almost Eriksson again getting on the end of it. Got to say, Ethan Martin's been excellent in terms of his distribution. Well rewarded with a goal moments ago. Gets it across, chance over the top. This time it was Benjamin Wallace looking to try and get himself on the score sheet. Just couldn't quite get over the top of it. But another opportunity, another moment for the Rapids. Lead by six goals to two, six and a half minutes remain. Said, I think with Hawks Bay they've got a core group of players maybe just lack that little bit of depth on the bench and a couple of just genuine playmakers. Just sort of feel too with this Waikato Rapid side, they're very much a team on the rise. They're a team who I think under Jet Lim are playing a style of futsal which is going to be very competitive. And now the shot comes, blocked. Cannot fault the courage and the intent of Hawks Bay throwing themselves at everything. And maybe the difference is just the depth on the bench. And back, and now go long. And Another opportunity there by Casey Sharplin in the 18 shirt. Cozens looks to go up the right side, just can't find it. And they turn position back over, and Erickson puts his head in his hands and says, Oh, if I could have just held on to that, perhaps I could have gone on my own. Nice skill set. This is good, this is good. The shot comes and just in the moment I think it's sharp when that gets in the way with the block. Looking to go down that left side, looking for the little chance, opportunity. Can't pull it back, just has no angle, doesn't have the balance. Now it's gonna need to go back. And just back inside their own half now, having to work their way back out of it, Hawks Bay. So Wallace on court for the Rapids in the number nine shirt. Appointment being shown by Roddy Kleinert. Feels he should have done a little bit better. We'll just play it out. Not pressing high at the moment. Defence from Hawks Bay. Pressing high, but not in a man on man type defence. Not going to be forced into coming too high and create the opportunity for the Rapids to look for their pivot man.
goes through. Game just starting to lose a little bit of its luster. I think the Rapids here realise they can just probably close it down a bit here. Maybe they just play a little bit side and just run the shot clock down. Or run the clock down, I should say, three and a half minutes. And the ball does go out, the clock does stop. Three minutes 23 remaining, 6 2 the score in favour of the team in red and white. Candy Stripes. Hawks Bay in almost Auckland colours with sort of the Manchester City socks. If we were to put it in football, I guess. But, yeah, it's been good foots all around. Doesn't find the intended receiver. New stuff up. He's got a very good goal off his head in the number nine shirt to start this half to bring it back within one, three, two. But since then, it's been three further goals from the Rapids. So they look to march on. It's a semi final spot in this Ford Futsal Super League for 2023. A player gone down heavily on the other side. He manages to get to his feet. Referee says play on. And now Fava. Just two and a half minutes now remaining. Hope you are enjoying coverage here on day three of the Ford Futsal Super League. So we see a long ball going through, slightly ambitious, but again, just showing their attacking intent. Rogers gets play back underway. Goes immediately across to Borden, the Australian, in the number 19 shirt. Not drawing the Hawks Bay defence too high at the moment. Looking for a little bit of a through ball. Keep it happy to let it roll. And Jack McCaw is the new keeper for Hawks Bay. With Percy Fish being replaced. Got more a chance of just giving players an opportunity to experience this full futsal super league. Little high ball through. And now just the 80 seconds remaining. Going to take their time. Instructions being given there by their goalkeeper, Patrick Steele. He says, Look, just play it. Let's just take a few more seconds off the clock. Let's put the pressure back on them. Trying to draw the defenders a little bit higher. But Hawks Bay sitting back saying, No, I'm not going to buy into that. And now they do through the needle. Great move here from the Rapids. Gets the cross across and almost scores on his own. Boy, they were patient there. And then just that little through ball found Aiden Robson. Robson just turned, went on his own. Looked initially like a cross, but almost ended up being a very, very good goal. But the score still remains at six goals to two. And now we see Cameron Patterson in the 13 shirt for Hawks Bay. And alongside of him, number 12, Alexander Eaglestone in the 12 jersey. Nicely holding that up. It's good futsal from the Rapids. And they continue to control this game and looking to just now shut it down. 
Maybe they'll just play beautiful futsal. But picked off now. Chance, opportunity. Goes little body swerve with a left foot and almost scores a stunner. Alexander Eaglestone showing just how lethal he can be given an opportunity. Give him an inch and he'll certainly take a yard. And they will get a set-piece opportunity here with 26 seconds remaining. So what do they try and do? Really what they're trying to do off the set-piece is get a shot in. But they turn position over, so good defence from the Rapids. Oh, nice again. Just a little foot out though. A little bit of a trip. So another foul will go against the Hawks Bay team. 9.6 seconds remaining. Do they have one final crack. Do they have one final shot here? They will. Do have the shot. No, oh, lovely work move too. Thought they were shooting. Didn't realise that on that far post was Cameron Cloetti, who almost scores. And that is the full-time hooter. So it is the Waikato. Rapids who end up beating Hawks Bay Futsal by six goals to two. And it was 3 1 at half time, and then early in the second half, 3 2. Really good header coming from Mustafa for the Hawks Bay before the floodgates opened. And we saw a really good goal from the Waikato Rapids through great team cohesion, great camaraderie. But when it's all said and done, it's a tick in the win column for the Waikato Rapids and the team led by their very good coach in Jet Lim. Don't go away, folks. More futsal action to come here on day three of the Ford Futsal Super League. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range, and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern, recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The FIFA Women's World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Thank you. 
Trust Arena is the venue. It is day three of the Ford Futsal Super League. Looking forward to this encounter. These two teams, in fact, met each other last night. And it went the way of Auckland City. Five goals to three over Canterbury. Yes, it doesn't get any bigger when it comes to rivalry. Auckland v Canterbury. Some people, if you live in the Canterbury region, might go, it's Canterbury versus the Jaffers. If you live here in Auckland, you might go, it's Auckland versus the Village of the Damned. You might just call it the Village versus the Damned against the Jaffers. We can have a little bit of fun, can't we? That's what it's all about, It's having that rivalry. But it will be played with the greatest of respect as we bring you the Ford Futsal Super League. Joining me in commentary today is a member of the Futsal Whites, Oban Hawkins. Oban last year, um, having played here for Auckland. Southern United. For no. Last year? Oh, though? last year, yeah. I was playing for East Coast Bays. East Coast Bays last year, who, who ended up going on to win the title. Um, but this year, due to his studies, is playing down there in the deep south. And he has a younger brother, Dominic, who plays for this Auckland City side. Well, Oban, welcome. Great to have you along. What lessons can be taken from last night's game? Canterbury losing by five goals to three. How do they turn it around today? Hey, cheers, Mark. Um... I think much of the same. Canterbury were very good yesterday. Um, got in Auckland's face. Um, had an early lead. Um, didn't quite capitalise, though. A few m m moments in defence where they kind of made mistakes, followed the wrong man, allowed Exposito, Espinosa and the likes to get through and punish them. It's just making sure they're switched on 100% of the time um, and they should be good. OK, let's have a look at the starting lineup for Auckland City. Let's have a look at that team list for the Auckland City futsal side. It will be Mike Antonimoff who will start in goal. Thomas Picken, Crit Twig. In fact, three Twig boys playing together. And it's a very, very good bench for Auckland City. They're a side who have the depth, and maybe that is the difference throughout this tournament. When you can go to players like Eduardo Exposito, Espinosa, Adam Paulson. We've got Alec Poldell, Josh Margetts. Barama Marty, who combined beautifully yesterday with Exposito Espinosa. And then you go through this Canterbury United side, known as the Dragons. Their starting lineup will be Tyler Clink, Cameron Emberton, Hemi Innes, Japed, Jacob Grosvenor, and Mark Zimmerman. And then they've got the likes of Finlay Cotton to call on, Charlie Bale, and the Japanese influence of Oikawa. So if they do go through their traditional pre-game protocols. Now, we've got the Twig Brothers. Now, I've got their official names, but they are given different names. Well, they've got their own, what? what's the way of saying it? They've been anglicised, haven't they? <laughs> New Zealand names, maybe? Yeah, so we've got Crit Twig. So Crit's Denny. Crit is Denny. And we've got Jirao or Jirao. That's Sam. Sam, and then Art keeps his name. Yeah, interesting, the older brother managed to keep his name for some reason. It flows off the tongue quite nicely. Yeah, got an absolute superstar in the making, and young Dominic Hawkins will wear the number 20 today. So number 22 there in goal for Canterbury will be Tyler Clink and the goalkeepers. Well, such a key part of any futsal team. You've got a good goalkeeper, you got a chance. So that will get play underway. It'll be Art Twig again in that pivot role. And up to his left will be Thomas Picken. And in that fixo role at the back will be Sam Twig. And then out. His right in possession of the ball at the moment is Denny. So let's see what the Canterbury Dragons can do here. When they come out, how much pressure they put on early. And what have they learned from yesterday? Yeah, really just over 12 hours to think about it. Now Twig looks for the little ball through. Great enterprise once again, just showing the little death touch that Sam Twig does have. 
Canterbury showing their hand really early there. They're just going to step on, try win the ball high, um, and test out Antaminov from there. So, kick in, but basically a set piece opportunity. The big drive comes. That's courage under fire there in that defensive lineup. Pied out. It is number 14. In fact, Zimmerman, who put his body on the line. Now, still looking, still looking. Opportunity here. Canterbury, can they press? Can they push forward? Good pressure from Walkton City. Keeping them well and truly stuck in their own half. Two very similar styles on defense here. Press as high as they can, win it high. So picking gets playback underway. Try and go one on one, Denny Twig. Trying to maybe check out the skill set and quality of the defence here. Goes on his own charts, great skills. Something comes away with it. They look to try and reset. Happy to be patient at the back. Now, better higher defence here coming from Canterbury. But does it go against them? Almost does. Almost that through ball and that one-on-one -on -one situation for Art Twig. <laughs> Chance here for Canterbury. Just couldn't quite get enough on the shot. Charlie Bale. Or is it Hemi Ennis? I think it is. Sometimes that nine can look like the eight from a distance. I watched City in that very first game against Capital and it just didn't look like they quite had that cohesion. But as this tournament's gone on, you really do just feel they are now starting to click. They've got that understanding. They seem to have their lines right in terms of the combinations. It's amazing how three brothers from the same family can play so cohesively together, have such a great understanding. No one's trying to take the limelight from the other one. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think this four in particular, their cohesion has always been there. Um, picking really good friends with the three brothers. Um, they play really nicely together. It's so when the other four start to come on, we'll see whether that co- because last night they didn't quite have that same cohesion. They kind of struggled against Canterbury, so we'll see how they go today. Let's see what Canterbury can do. They will lift against any side that has Auckland attached to its name. Equally, Auckland will lift against any side that has Canterbury attached to its name. So it will be Pickin, who looks quickly. Oh, good skills, but well read in the finish. Nicely done there by Cameron Emberton for Canterbury. Read it well in the number four shirt. Will be Emberton on the ball. Now looks for the long ball, switches play nicely, but Twig gets across. Very good defensively to Denny Twig. And looks for the through ball, but to nobody. Canterbury haven't really had an opportunity on attack just yet. Just haven't been able to quite press high enough. Oh, just getting picked off too easily at the moment. Yeah, Canterbury's starting to set off a little bit on defence as well. Auckland sitting getting higher up. It'll feed into what they do, feed it into Art, get runners off him. Try to put a shot away. Yeah, good here. This is better than Canterbury. Now just need to be patient here. Good, good. But that's what we talk about. Pickens there just getting up. And just putting pressure on the ball carrier. Number 14 for Canterbury Zimmerman. Really seen 
And Timonoff being put under any real pressure. And at the other end, the chance comes. The bicycle kick. That would have been the highlights reel. Uh, Twig. Courage just to do that on a hard court. We've seen that from Twig before, actually. He scored one in this in this stadium before. Bicycle kick dinked over. A little bit further out. Got the keeper unaware. Go wide. Switch and play. That's better from Canterbury. A little bit more urgency, a little bit more enterprise. Ball movement has to be quick when you're getting stepped on. And yeah, they've started to kind of find it, start to find that cohesion. Yeah, turn it away, one-on-one -on -one situation. Just not maybe quite a not way to not look at the skill set there. That is superb. Boy, that is just wonderful futsal from Denny Twig. What a player. Of course, the MVP of the last season. Hadn't quite started the season quite as quickly, uh, but just yesterday, put a few away and he's back, back in top form. Got this time getting manhandled, but draws a number of defenders across, but just holding his shape really well, City. Kind of just struggling to find a way through here at the moment. And now Twig comes away with it again, taken down. Be close to a yellow card, is it? Because that was fairly intentional. Zimmerman, man guilty. I don't think he had too much of a choice, and it will be a yellow card. So just for people out there, what does that mean for a yellow? Yellow card, just a caution. Um, you get a second yellow, uh, you're off for the game, you're done. But they bring another player on in that situation, though? Uh, yeah, so they bring. So you have two minutes where you play with three outfield players. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you can bring someone else on. So and that's play in a red card situation, in a red two card. yellows. Yeah. Okay. Sam Twig there is so good at playing that fixo role. He's in up the bum of someone behind him and comes in, wins that ball strongly and can attack. It's so hard being that target man with Sam playing behind you. There's a chance here now. So Podell on for Auckland and the number 14. So we've also got the big man, Espinosa, on, which generally means if he is on, you can probably expect... Barham and Marty as well, and they two work together well. So, got that Middle East and then South American connection. It's just the physicality. Superstar in the making and Dominic Hawkins. Rings nicely, doesn't it? Superstar Dominic Hawkins. It just rings nicely, doesn't it, Ovin Hawkins? Older <laughs> brother of Dominic. <laughs> it goes easier off the tongue with a shorter first name, I think. Did he sit down last night and have a wee listen, did he? Push him up. Is he done? from Canterbury. Just, oh, nicely done. Needs to take the shot, lays it off. The left foot shot comes and they almost open the scoring themselves. And that is really good enterprise from Canterbury. That's the first real wave of cohesion we've seen from the boys in black and red. Yeah, superb from Zim Zimmerman. When Auckland City's defence breaks down is when a man is beaten one on one and suddenly it becomes a four on three scenario and that's exactly what he did there. Now, now Marty. That'll be a battle back there, Marty versus Innes. Innes is a slight man. Um, but he, he doesn't back down from anything. Yeah, and that's what you've got to do, eh? Send a message, say, look, you're not going to get through me. Oh, good shot again from Big Espinosa. It's a great name, isn't it? Eduardo Exposito Espinosa. Goes back. The shot from distance. Great save. Superb from Tyler Clink in goal. Needed to be at his best because he was unsighted for a little bit of that. A number of defenders and attackers in front of him. Went the right way, though. 
And now, that is that combination we talk about between Espinosa and Amadi. This time just couldn't quite find Amadi, the intended target. And lovely little piece of innovation here from Canterbury. Now they turn. Yes, not quite enough weight on it. And now Hawkins looks to try and go long with the long ball, but to nobody. Another wave of attack coming here from Canterbury. They get it across. And again, it was the big man in the middle this time. Charlie Bale, who almost... Now Hawkins, what can he conjure up? He pushes now forward into that pivot role. Podell, Exposito, Espinosa. Podell again. Hawkins. Amari. Amari looking to hold up, tries to get the shot. In fact, Espinosa. That's what you've got when you've got that physicality, you can lean on those defenders. Really well done from Auckland City there. Able to move the ball quickly, move the ball around side to side, and that opens up that gap yeah. through to the middle where they can find the top man. Yeah, you can see the contrasting style that this four bring to Auckland mm. City, say what we saw from Pick and Twig and the, well, the three Twig brothers, but it, it, that's about the style that they bring, their individuality. But I think what I, I think what just balances it out is the fact that Dominic Hawkins is a slightly different player, perhaps what we've seen from Amadi and what we see from Espinosa. Mm. Him and Podell on the sides there kind of really um, complement them very well. Nice ball up through the middle, but well defended again there from Espinosa. And Hawkins does well again. Espinosa comes away with it. Lovely little ball. And again, not afraid to hit it from distance. Amadi. It's all Auckland at the moment in terms of possession, but Canterbury, the chances they've had have been very, very good. That's what they need to do. They need to try and hit this Auckland team. If they could get themselves up two goals against the run of play, then that's how the city side deal with it. Not used to being bullied, not used to being down by two. How do they respond in an adverse situation? No, lovely little piece down the line. That's good futsal. Just couldn't quite control it. Ribeiro brings that kind of, he's a Brazilian, brings that Brazilian flair to this Canterbury side. Can take it man, one-on-one, -on -one. don't want to leave him, don't want to leave him too isolated from an Auckland City perspective. And so Josh Marquette's now on for Auckland City as well. Number 16 is Adam Paulson. Number 7 is Sean McEntee. Sean McKinty making his debut for the season. Um, comes in to replace Sean Morgan, who had quite a horrible injury yesterday. I imagine he'll be watching. Just want to make sure, just sending our best wishes to Sean Morgan. Um, and yeah, all the best for his recovery. Yeah, ACL injury, we understand. So, yeah. Great player, too. A complete player, Sean Morgan. to try and come back inside. So, Canterbury here. Just taking their time. Oh, turn it over. Chance comes. Desperation stuff. The lovely little flick back. Hoping he can find a player. Really great intent. And just a split second away from Baby coming off. This little matchup here, Paulson versus Charlie Bailey on this left flank, is a is a great matchup. Charlie Bailey, incredible one on one defender, great heart, great fight. Um, but obviously, Adam Paulson probably best one on one attacker in the game. So Bailey now, Paulson. So Bailey will come away with it now. Chance switches it. Oh, opportunity was there, just couldn't quite get over the top. But just showing the danger of when you press that high, you open yourself up at the other end and turn position over. 
And it was almost a goal scoring opportunity for Sam Richards. And there we go. We we'll talk about that. Charlie Bailey. Big man. Paulson, a little bit ambitious, but just showing his attacking intent, so it's still tied up at nil all, ten and a half minutes remain this first half, day three of the Ford Futsal Super League. Now, drives forward. Then another great effort. And that just shows the quality and class just wide. I do wonder, though, whether Tyler Clint might have been across to cover it if it had been maybe another foot to the left. So a set-piece opportunity. I'll get you, Oban Hawkins, to just talk us a little bit through about what they're trying to achieve at set-piece. So Auckland set up with Margetts and Paulson in a bit of a line. Margetts will try to draw one. If it's on, he leaves it like that. And typically Paulson would come in for a shot potentially, but Canterbury were up quick on him there and uh, didn't give him the opportunity. And, and so in terms of scoring from set piece, there is a, what, what, how many attempts before you sort of want to score? I mean, is there a high percentage chance of scoring from set piece? Is there an expectation to score? I'm not sure on the stats, but all our coaches seem to think it's the time to score, so we spend a silly amount of time on them. Um, but yeah, it is, it is quite a common time to score set pieces. So if you can develop quite a good one, or develop a few in which so defenders aren't sure which one you're using, then they can be very, very dangerous. Reminds me of penalty corner and field hockey. Mm. Similar sort of thing. Yeah. There's a lot of field hockey type, and particularly amongst the goalkeepers, the way they extend their legs a lot more than what you see on a standard football field. Mm. So futsal, it does bring in a lot of the skills you see in ice hockey and sports like water polo and so in field hockey but yet its own unique sport in its own right nice play here from City Flying Pickens and they go back to Paulson goes on the inside great skill set look at this lovely little shimmy still manages to get the left foot away not a lot of power in it now Canterbury can they break great vision just not quite executed right but really nice player movement there Ribeiro, the Brazilian, was the intended target in the number 10 shirt. Oh, turns it over. Chance now. Has to have it. Strike first time. And took the pace off it, which made it almost difficult for Antonin off. But chance there for Mikawa from Japan. Oh, and at the other end. Manages to get a boot on that for Auckland. And Sean McEntee. He's pressing much higher here, Canterbury now. It's a danger, though. And as we say, good defence again coming from Bailey. Mark Zimmerman, in fact. So Zimmerman in the 14 shirt. Now, opportunity here for City. What can they conjure up? Desperately wanting to score before half time. Uh, Stephen Ashby Peckham on court, their captain. Quite an even game so far, I'd say. Auckland City probably having more of the chances, but potentially Canterbury are having the better of the chances. Yeah, Canterbury had some really, really good scoring opportunities, just beating the finish, and maybe the, you know, Antimon off too. Just...
side, Thomas Pickett. Goes back to Sam Twig. So, pretty much gone back to their starting lineup. Auckland City now. Third wave used of players. So, Mark Twig in that pivot. Sam Twig playing in that fix it role. And then Thomas Pickin and Denny Twig playing in that midfield wing positions. And what's the call here? So two touch. So goalkeeper can only touch the ball once in a team's attacking position without the other, the opposing team touching the ball. So we get an indirect free kick from where the goalkeeper touched it for the second time. Opportunity to drill this boy. Your heart rates must be high in this wall of defence here. This is where you'd bring on Eduardo Exposito Espinosa just to scare the hell out of them, I would have thought. Oh, and I think that might have just hit the top of the crossbar and went directly down. No VAR. No goal line technology. No goal line technology. They still debate the goal against Germany in the 1966 <laughs> World Cup final, don't they, whether it went in or not, whether it crossed the line. I think they got their revenge in 2010 with Frank Lampard. Yeah, they did. I think that one was clear, though. Yeah. That one bounced back out. Was it Jeff Hurst? Was it a Jeff Hurst goal in 66? It, it, was, a, been? it was a Jeff Hurst. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Great innovation. Oh, I like that, too. That's just the skill set that Auckland have. Jenny Twig there looking to be on the end of that volley. Just didn't quite connect. Quite a funny tweet I saw after the World Cup final was Ali McCoy saying it, famous Scottish commentator. Yeah. The first hat trick in a World Cup final where all the goals crossed the line. <laughs> well, the Scots have got no love for the English, <laughs> haven't they? <laughs> oh. Turn charts here. Can't quite get around. Good defence. Holding it back up. The Twigs running havoc now. And was it Thomas Pickin, was it, with the left foot skyward shot? But the Twig boys just creating havoc for this Canterbury defence. They certainly look a better outfit with and this group of four players. And Pickin there, he just manages all the time to be able to fight his way out of scenarios where you feel like he's going to lose the ball and bang, he stays up. Well, here yep, we go. Chance at the other end against the runner play, but they'll come back. They'll still have a set-piece opportunity here from a kick-in. Or is it a corner? No. Now, imagine they can score here with just under seven minutes remaining. Now the shot does come. Ambitious. Corner will be called. Red picked off now. Chance here for City one on one. He goes himself, has the shot, manages to get the big mid out. Does Tyler Clink for Canterbury? Good save. Came off his line, shut the angle down. Oh, great skill set! Really nice from Sam Twig there. And now another chance. And out of that miss, got to say, Canterbury under siege at the moment. Sam Twig showing his array of skills there. Starts from the back, builds up the attack to Sam, and then finds, finds himself up top. Uh, manages to turn uh, Marty kind of style and get a strike away. Very close to that bottom corner. Auckland versus Canterbury. A rivalry, whether it be in rugby, whether it be in hockey. Well, it exists here in the sport of futsal. But he certainly would come in as the favourites after having won this clash last night. 
But this is a dogged, more determined Canterbury side this morning. Just under six minutes remain. Still nil all. Chances for both teams. In regards to possession, you would go in the way of Auckland. But opportunities fairly equal. Showing both individually and collectively. And now, got to get themselves out of this. They play quickly, Canterbury. Now, need to push up. Love to just get that opening goal, wouldn't they? Love to just have Auckland City there going, hey, this is a little bit unfair. So, Zimmerman's been good in the 14 shirt on the ball at the moment. Acting in that fixo roll. So on court at the moment, number 12, Grosvenor. And it will be Grosvenor who is on the ball. But look at the urgency here from City. Just great pressure being put on by Art Twig. And will be free kick, though, the way of Canterbury. Down the line, lovely skills, looks for the cross. Opportunity there. It will be a kick in though for Canterbury. Boy, a really good dynamic run coming from Emberton for Canterbury down that left side in the number four shirt. Showing some real pace and his ability to accelerate. Remarkable. Yeah, wrapping his left foot around that one, Emberton. Known, renowned for his left foot. goes long. Saw earlier today, Hawks Bay score a very good goal from a header from a long ball early in the first half to early at the start of the second half to close the gap on the Waikato side. But it was Waikato who ended up running away with it in the finish, but it was a very, very good goal. Now chance here. Comes out nicely though, well read by Antonimov, too experienced. No hesitation. So Thomas Pickens goes across to Twig. Up to Art Twig now. Happy for the ball to run. And they will change their lineup. And the mercurial genius that is Dominic Hawkins comes on. <laughs> uh, he's your new Expressi de Espinosa. Espinosa, though. So it is a good lineup too. Yeah, slightly different makeup with Hawkins. It's Espinosa. And you've got Baram Amadi. And also Podell. Amadi. Canterbury now through Innes. Innes, acting in that fixo roll. Happy to move off to Grosvenor. Nice rotation. Oh, that's good play. That's good play. The chance comes. Great shot. Great goal. Superb. Superb. And that is brilliant this time from Grosvenor. Well worked. And it is Canterbury who score first and now lead Auckland City by one goal to nil. Futsal at his finest. That is superb. That is brilliant. That is Canterbury. Incredible futsal from Canterbury. They move Auckland City round at the back. Superb, superbly quick ball movement. Runner comes through, isn't tracked, lays it back. Incredible finish. Yeah, great shot though from Grosvenor, wasn't it? I mean, really, from distance. He hit it, the ball was on the move. Really easy to put that over the top. Got over it nicely and just drilled it. A goal that Steven Gerrard would have been proud of. <laughs> You do with one of those for Stephen from Stephen Gerrard at Liverpool at the moment. Let's not go there. <laughs> I haven't been mean to you all morning. I'm not sure why you're wanting to do that to me. Yeah, Espinosa now looking for to use uh, his Brazilian magic. 
They might just need to be walking. They've got a chance here. Need to move it quickly. Chance comes. Great save. Oh, and it could have been two. And the drama, Hemi Innes. He knows what was at stake there. 2 0. Would have been genuine psychological damage. He does all the hard work. He wins it. He wins it high. He drives. He plays the pass. It sets back from him. He sees glory. <laughs> Just puts it over, but Canterbury, Canterbury looking great right now. Can yeah. they nick another? Well, just got it. Oh, shot from Espinosa. He is a player too who can score from anywhere. Score some uncanny goals. But does he just need to anchor himself at the back there? Just be that rock in defence. He is a brick wall. He's just getting a bit too loose, pressing a bit high Auckland at times, and Canterbury just picking them apart through that long ball. Now another chance, gave it away in the middle again. Got the player out to their thing. The shot comes. Good blocking this time, though, by Amadi. Looking for Hawkins. That just combination breaks down a little bit. Ball not bouncing Auckland's way at the moment. Pass is not finding feet. Canterbury have to make the most of this advantage. 242 remains. They had a little bit of a momentum shift. It's been city for much of it. And really good defensive effort from Canterbury. But then it's been Canterbury who have had the better offensive opportunities and capitalised on it. And one of the, might almost just be the best goal of the tournament when you consider the opposition. been some very very good goals but that one yeah would certainly almost be top of the list in terms of the games I've watched there was a brilliant goal on the first day from the remarkable Dominic Hawkins against the capital side contrasting goals actually that goal that Dominic Hawkins scored was obviously something which kind of came out of nothing a great pass set him up whereas that was all built yeah that was coach would be yeah. supremely happy with I, that I think the Hawkins goal was a moment of individual brilliance where that Canterbury goal as you said that was just beautiful team cohesion and everything needed to work and yeah executed beautifully easy to do it in training not always easy to do it in the game now chance here gets tries a little toe poke still what do the referees say corner set piece opportunity for Canterbury so where are Auckland City coming undone at the moment here defensively because they are just getting found out a little bit so Auckland City, the way they defend is they set up a shape um, which is a zonal shape. And so when Canterbury get runners coming through the middle, there's where the spaces are. And if they can find those players, then that's how they can break Auckland City down. That's what they're doing very well at the so moment. So if you're sitting there as the coach of Auckland City, Nicholas Downs, what are you going to be saying to these guys in terms of preventing that from happening? I think you're trying to become as tight as you can as a defensive structure. Every shot comes in. Comes out, holds it up nicely, Espinosa. So as tight as you can, so it starts from Armadi up top and then your flank is tucking in, making sure you can't find those balls into the middle. I'm sure he'll be telling his boys coming on now and also have a big, big chat at halftime. Ennis was looking for that there. Yep. Hawkins. Hawkins gets manhandled. I've seen that before. Timmy Innes, the defender on Hawkins. Now they look to try and thread the gap through the middle, but to nobody. Now chance here for Canterbury again. Does he go on his own? He has the shot. And so just in that moment of hesitation, he did have a player open on his right, but decided to go. So nine for Canterbury is in us. I think across the far side at that point he did have Charlie Bailey. And now the shot with no real weight on it. And then and off gets it out. Tender target was Josh Margetts. And so with just a minute nine remaining, it is Canterbury who lead by one goal to nil. One of the things too, be careful here. Nappy. Chance now. Just a little bit too much weight on that pass. But I guess one of the things that we do have to um, factor in here, 
Oban is fatigue factors. These two teams played each other last night. It's been a busy two days so far. This is day three, and it is about recovery. Yeah, I think this is fourth game for Canterbury. Fifth game for Auckland City of the weekend. At this, this point is when the lactic acid is truly built up. Um, it takes a little bit longer to get down to breakfast on the third morning. Even with the buffet that's put on at the hotel. Dude, boy, you guys are styling. Who sponsors you boys if you stand <laughs> at a hotel with a buffet? New Zealand will set us up all right, actually. Good. It's been actually one of the joys of my weekend. Typically, I'm playing. Um, I've got to kind of watch what I eat. Yeah. Um, this week being on commentary, you don't have to. Well, no, I do. I, I'm sort of on that intimate fasting, so I don't actually eat till midday, so I start oh. to fade shortly. <laughs> so if I do sort of nod off, you won't have to pick <laughs> it up. Oh, my fortunately, God. fortunately, this game's providing a little bit of drama. I've got the adrenaline and the excitement going. <laughs> I've got my Minata ready to go at 12 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, my I don't think I'll fade away with the breakfast I had. Oh, starting to get a bit physical here now. Just both sides just need to calm it down a little bit. I do love the theatre, though, that Charlie Bailey's saying, hey, I didn't do anything. You're going to start to play that level of physicality with me. Um, I think it's Sean McEntee, is it, across the far side there that mm. was involved in that skirmish. He's a big lad. Going to lean on me. I'll put you to the terra firma. And both sides at the moment. So it's Canterbury that do have three fouls. And now, oh, just a breakdown in communication. The idea was right, but just didn't fall the way of Josh Marquettes, who was the intended receiver. So number 13 is Samuel Mitchell for Canterbury. And so just 13 seconds remaining. And yeah, we will go into half time. Can City somehow bring it back? Now Anthony Moff looks to try and go long. A bit of a hey or Mary, a bit of a hope, trying to get a hit on it. Still 5.2 seconds. It's Canterbury leading. Trying to do commentary by Oban Hawkins, member of the Futsal Whites. Out, at, out with concussion protocol. He stays playing for the Southern United side. Shot comes, and what a way to almost finish the second half. Oh, wow. And another one where he just looks to the heavens. And it was Montgomery Joseph for Canterbury, one of the substitutes who almost, almost gave Canterbury a 2-0 lead heading into halftime. Hope you're enjoying coverage here on day three from Trust Arena in Waitakere in Auckland. If you do enjoy your futsal, you enjoy your football, you want to come along and watch, it is free to get in. Some of the best futsal players in the country, arguably some of the best futsal players in the world. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more shortly from Trust Arena. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. 
We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whanau in New Zealand. we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. Here in Waitakere, this intriguing encounter on day three of the Ford Futsal Super League. It is Canterbury, the team in red, up against Auckland City. And it is Canterbury who lead by one goal to nil. These two teams played each other last night, and Auckland ended up winning that by five goals to three. In terms of possession, well, you'd probably say in the first half, the possession stakes went the way of Auckland City, but it is Canterbury who have had probably as many chances and they capitalised in one of the best goals, possibly the best goal of the tournament so far. So now the pressure is on Auckland City to respond. Alongside of me, Oban Hawkins, a member of the Futsal Whites, who is part of the Southern team, but out this week due to concussion protocols. He's joining us in the expert role, bringing us all the analysis. And if you're a non-Futsal -futs aficionado, hopefully breaking down some of the intricacies that go with this remarkable form of football. Got to be careful, you're not allowed to use the word football. Futsal players are very, very protective, and it is futsal. Yeah, no, no indoor football, no five-a-side football. A um, few people get a little bit upset over those kind of things. Kind of football and soccer kind of terminology. And now chance comes here. No, they pick it off nicely now. Auckland City. They'd love to strike early. Big shot comes the way of Ashby Peck and the captain. Is it the turn of the captain to take control here? To step up. Number seven up there in that pivot is Sean McEntee. Another big man too. Got a physical presence about him. Number 12. Josh Margetts so at the moment just resting the Twig boys expect them to come on probably in that next wave or do they look to try and close this game out 19 minutes to go need to find a goal somehow certainly got the ability the city side stacked full of stars probably got the deeper bench 
and now. Good pressure here coming from Canterbury. Pressing nice and high defensively. Got to be found out, not careful. Three Canterbury players up and just the one back. Now they look to try and go long and the chance does come. And that is the danger. The shot and he skies it over the top. Uh, good opportunity for Adam Paulson. Just couldn't control it. Interesting that Canterbury pushing really high then. Very high risk, high reward. Auckland City very close to breaking out by just passing it. Stephen Ashby through the middle. If Canterbury obviously win it though. Very good opportunity at goal. Asking for it, referees say play on. Bench not happy for Canterbury. They felt that that was a bit high. Boot went in. Code of the whistle. It's the first thing you learn, isn't it? In any form of sport, it is refed. These two teams played a lot each other last night, and it was five goals to three. It's Canterbury who lead, though. The shot comes really nicely. Picked off by Antimanov, the goalkeeper. And for my apologies. In fact, it was Tyler Clank. Oh, that's always the most deceptive shot, the ones where perhaps it doesn't always come with speed. Goalkeeper's reaction time is expected to be hit with a little bit more velocity and often find themselves off balance. Chance now for Auckland. Happy to keep it down. Good solid defence here from Canterbury though. So City being pushed back into their own half, having to rebuild. And what is the ruling there? And maybe off the ball, was it? Interesting. Must have been. Maybe McKinty pushing a player, trying to gain an advantage. A little bit casual there at the back from Canterbury. Got to be a little bit careful. With Josh Marquette's pushing high. Yeah, when you've got a 1-0 lead and you've been fighting for it, it's the worst thing when you give away a soft goal. You give away a ball at the back. Yeah, now they look to try and go long, looking for the through ball. Great intent, just a little bit too much weight on the pass. The intended target there was Sam Mitchell for Canterbury. Another big man too, Mitchell. He's got a presence about him. Pressed by the levels of fitness. This is a hard game aerobically. And now we do see Denny Twig on. We've got Thomas Pickin on, and we've got the starting lineup that makes City look a better unit cohesively when they are on. The Twig brothers and Pickin. But they'll need to really try and capitalise now because this is a, a, a group of four players who just have an innate understanding. Really good again. Oh, now picked off Canterbury here. Look at the physicality. The shot does come. Oh, really good, gutsy, and courageous play from the Brazilian representing Canterbury, Daniel Ribeiro. Yeah, great strength to hold off Sam Twig. Sets up a corner here. What they can, what can they do with it? See, that's where you talk about corner routines. You want to have a few up your sleeve. Typically, when you roll that one, you're looking further out for a shot from deep, whereas that roll back set up in us, who could then get a shot off. Oh, lovely skills. Oh, Twig, superb. Just couldn't quite get enough weight on that final pass, but Denny Twig showing his skill set, the Midas touch. Canterbury still hanging on, 16 minutes, not hanging on, that's not fair, They're not hanging on there. Very much in this contest. Now turns, looks for the shot and almost pulls it to that. That was an opportunity for Okawa of Japan. Okawa is known for that burst of speed into a little gap, get a quick shot off. He's very good at it.
foul goes against Twig there. Interesting. I think it might have been for catching the ball, assuming he was going to get the foul call. Pressure, not part of the equation at any point just yet. Let's just go through a couple of scenarios here, Oban. That if it's still 1-0 with three or four minutes, will we see City adopt the fifth man? Is it in their style? Is it in their nature? Yeah, it's definitely in Auckland City's nature. Um, they would have been working on fifth man quite a lot. Um, but I, wouldn't, I would, wouldn't be surprised if they went to it earlier than three or four minutes, actually. So, OK. So that'll be a fascinating... Of course, they'll be hoping that's not the scenario. Chance here now. Really good defence from Canterbury. You can just see what a concentrated effort that is, too. Bailey's been very good in defence all day for them. Ribeiro, the Brazilian, on now. And he's providing something different. Great skills now. Can they turn just too much weight on the pass, though, from Picken? Looking for the intended target, Twig. Interesting little passage of play here. Nick Downs has turned to his four, which I think are viewed as being, well, before I say this. Yeah, the commentator's curse. Yeah. People. Don't want the commentator's curse. <laughs> But he's turned to his four, which he thinks, and I think is quite widely known as his kind of big four in terms of going out to dominate a game, go win the game, score him some goals. And Canterbury's kind of seen off that challenge very well. So it'll be just kind of interesting to see how the rest of this plays out. Yeah, this is it too, though, isn't it? You, you say, hey, hang on, man, this is not working. We always work. And then they, you know, hey, when was the last time we had this level of adversity? And that's when you start to see how they react mentally. And so this is good from Canterbury. Really, really good gutsy performance. Bringing it forward to Sam Mitchell. Mitchell comes across to number eight, Charlie Bailey. Benny Twig, nice move between him and Art Twig, his brother. And Auckland will retain possession. Turns, turns, holds it up. Not enough. Canterbury break at the other end. And Pickens comes across the shot. Comes. Oh, but the whistle goes. The whistle goes. Said a little bit of a shove in the back. And so nearly 2-0. But the shot coming after the whistle would have been another stunning goal from Canterbury. But City survive. Oh, it would be interesting to see that one back. I'm not sure how much Okawa got of Pickin. It seemed like he mainly got the ball. Pickin lucky to get away with that one there. Uh, referee was clear. He was decisive. The whistle was certainly heard before. And now Auckland at the other end. They will get the corner. Well, that would have been a game changer. Auckland finding themselves down by two goals. They still trail by one. It's Canterbury leading. That would have changed up fifth man estimates in terms of time. Would have had to go to it a little bit earlier. Now Twig, Twig looking to turn. That is his skill set, Denny Twig. Well, if people think Auckland is just going to romp through this tournament and win the Super League, well, this is just a demonstration that on your day, anything is possible. Canterbury coming to gate through... Okinawa, the Japanese player, who's not afraid to get physical too. And now Romero, the Brazilian. Oh, now the referees, they're asking for... Players asking for the referee. Pick in. To Twig. Goes back to his brother. Looking for the goals. This is the opportunity. Uh, Twig 
Just couldn't quite pivot enough and the defender was flat up in his face. This game has picked up an intensity level. This is great futsal. And now Canterbury again through the Brazilian. Ribeiro with the shot. With the left foot, Antimanov stretched. But the shot was wide. But Auckland pressing high and then getting hit in the counter-attack. Canterbury a couple of times now. And Daniel Ribeiro, the man with the Brazilian influence, not afraid to go one-on-one. -on -one. He brings that physicality. Outstanding game of futsal. Charlie Bailey, number eight, having a chat to the referees too. Charlie Bailey's always having a chat to somebody. Be a good halfback in rugby, wouldn't he? <laughs> he would be. <laughs> a good now one. a third chance. Opportunity holds up the defence. Flick back, the shot comes. Oh, hard tweak. He manages to get a boot out. But really good play again. Canterbury here, holding up the defender. Waiting for their fixo to move forward. And then the little back heel. And they go again through Bailey. This time, though, Denny Twig. Well, just getting out physical at the moment of Auckland. Out muscled. Mark Simmon also having an effect. Another big man in the number 14. Yeah. Like a switch play with an aerial ball. Too much weight on it. Just over 12 minutes remaining. You have just joined us if you want to see one of the great goals. Do watch the Canterbury goal. Scored in the first half. Through Jacob Grosvenor. Tries to get on the other side of the defender. Ball will go the way of Canterbury. Despite the protests of the Auckland City side. A different attacking challenge here for Canterbury to deal with. Amadi comes back onto the court. The big man looks to roll, looks to receive it up high and then run as often. Yeah, well, I think too, in all seriousness, that um, Dominic Hawkins is a player too. I think he has the individual ability to maybe change the game. And he is on the ball at the moment. Lovely little pass. But he's got that low centre of gravity. And now big Esposito asking the referee for the free kick and does get it. A very low centre of gravity, some would say. High intellect. <laughs> Young Dominic Hawkins. So he's in the number 20 shirt. Busy player. Good high skill set. Great control too. Knows how to bring a volley down if required. Very good in terms of the aerial game. Practice a lot in his backyard growing up, I'm told. As we see now, Eduardo Exposito Espinosa. And Hawkins chasing desperately back. Oh, just got a little bit of a toe on up the Cantabrian. And that was Finn Gupset. Gupset, haven't seen him on. Previously, now chance for Twig, big shot, right foot cannon coming from Amadi. That's the danger he presents too. He is a highlight reel, Amadi. Comes down.
so 11 minutes there or thereabouts remain Canterbury leading by one Auckland City looking to try and bring one back these two teams played each other last night lovely through ball chance comes does he have time couldn't quite bring it down waiting for his players to come back Hawken gets in the face he's a busy footballer Hawken did well but just couldn't quite control that long ball but danger signs again for Auckland good play coming from Mark Zimmerman in the number 14 shirt for Canterbury has a crack with the left foot almost creates something out of nothing oh and that is a oh collective sigh as it goes across the face from Bara Mamadi it's great play from Marty doesn't even look up just expect someone to be there Hawkins a few meters away minutes still plenty of time no fifth man action on the bench just yet Canterbury almost catching Auckland napping player managed to get in behind Bara Mamadi then defensively a few times that's happened now just recently that man kind of going line long Auckland City not following their men now Mamadi good ball here he is Hawkins, what can he do? Fancy footwork. Goes back to Exposito. Espinosa. And Pardell. And Esposito. Espinosa with the shot. It's just great strength for me to. A lot of the time in the gym, a lot of thought around his diet gets him to that kind of position. As I say, you don't put two stroke in a Ferrari. He'll enjoy that one. Another shot. Well blocked. Test from Canterbury saying that's our ball. Now, following this game, we'll have a women's game for you. It'll be Papakura City up against Central Futsal. Central, a, a relatively young side up against the defending champions out of Papakura. Marvin Eakins, the coach there of Papakura. And you see, once again, Canterbury getting men high in the corners. They're free. They can even look to look, go across the back stick. Here we go, hit me in this. Oh! It's 2-0 Canterbury. Canterbury lead by two over Auckland. And now Auckland City have some work to do. That is a well-worked goal from Canterbury. Very clinical. And just like that, they lead by two with nine minutes to play in one of the best games of futsal we have seen over the three days. How does City respond? You'd say it's nothing more than deserved. Hemi Innes wins it high, drags the keeper, rolls him, free stroke into the back of the net. Oh, shot. Wow. Great effort this time from Paulson. The good piece of goalkeeping from Tyler Clink. Very much game on. Walken, Espinosa, Exposito. It's a great touch from Paulson. Desperation stuff. Oh, couldn't quite turn and shoot on the ground. And Amadi, well, 
the intensity is lifted. Canterbury, what are the fatigue levels like? They ring the changes. Are we going to see short shifts here, but intense shifts? They can afford to shut it up if they want. Now another chance, but this time Antonimov does come out, collects it. Auckland will look to try and move it quickly. They switch play nicely. Amadi, Hawkins, Espinosa. Through ball, Espinosa, and the shot blocked. How did that stay out? James Mitchell on the line, it's unbelievable. It's superb play from Auckland City. They dragged them, Exposito through the middle, found by Hawkins, almost 2-1. Just needs to have a crack himself sometimes. <laughs> yes. He won the Razine Golden Boot last year. So 7.37, at what point do they go to the fifth man? I asked them to start to run out of time shortly. What I'm liking, though, from Canterbury, they're still playing this way. They're still looking to go long. They're still looking to try and exploit this press that Auckland City are putting on them. They haven't shut up shop. They haven't parked the bus. Yeah, there's no sitting off at all. It's tempting to get against a team like Auckland City. You find yourself up when they're so dangerous if they get past your press. It's um, tempting to sit in, but I think they're doing the right thing here. This game has very big implications for the top four, actually. Canterbury win this, and they look odds-on to make the top four. A big game coming up between Waikato and Southern United after this to kind of figure out those top four spots heading into next weekend. Yeah, Southern missing their start. And Open Hawkins out with a concussion. I'd argue they're missing their start with ben, Benjamin Stanley. Top now shot comes! Could have been three. Antimanov holds his ground, stands tall, manages to push it over the top. So Auckland now in real trouble. Seven minutes remain. It is Canterbury. Just wave after a wave at the moment. Have the momentum. And that's a little bit ambitious. It'll be three points every day of the week in rugby. Shot there from Sam Richards. When you've got Antimanov in goal, you've got to go low. He's a big man. He's got big reach. Got to go low in between his hands and his feet. Three ball. Go long. Chance here now for City. Oh, good effort. Great power on that shot. Being delivered by Paulson. They pick up the corner for it. Time is starting to run out, though. 6.40 on the clock. And now gone to their talisman, their captain, Ashby Peckham. Lovely move from Peckham. Can he turn it in? Oh, didn't get the runner. Breakdown in communication. The move was on. But, however, was maybe expecting... Adam Paulson to be across there on that left-hand side, and Paulson just misread it. But Paulson down this left-hand side, two players on him, and they do pick it off. Uh, he was doing a good job of drawing those four defenders across to that left-hand side, but he just couldn't shift the ball and create that overlap. Oh, ball's out. So Canterbury now, every time they turn position over, the bench goes up. There's a big roar. Everybody on the edge of their seats here. Large crowd behind us. You won't see it on TV. off now. 
to come forward through Ashby Peckham. Picked off, now another one-on-one -on -one chance to make it three, surely, and it is. And it's all over now, you'd have to say, because Grosvenor has scored his second. It was lovely play, but I can't with the Japanese influence. Auckland, well, gave possession away, found themselves in a two-on-one situation, beautifully executed. And it is Canterbury, the Dragons, who lead the might of Auckland City by three goals to nil with under six minutes remaining. It's a dangerous game, dribbling from that fixer position. Ashby Peckham gets cut out, and then Akawa finds Richards, who does the rest. Oh, a little bit of niggle going on. A little unlucky, I think, Canterbury here, because I've got a feeling that Sean McEntee milked that for everything it was worth. And Cameron Eberton not happy. But they will get a free kick in goal scoring range. What are we likely to see here, Mobin? I think you can see Josh Margetts as that far man. Look for McKinty to block Emberton, and then Margetts wrap around for the shot at that back stick. Oh, does it too. They get away with it, though. Can a revenge go up? Fascinating game. Remember, these two teams played each other last night. And it ended up being Auckland who won that 5-3. But Morgan picked up a knee injury and not available today. And don't underestimate the influence he has. Now charge, surely! Great piece of keeping again from the Canterbury goalkeeper, Tyler Clink. Interesting to see you look over to that Auckland City bench. Not a movement for a fifth man shirt as of yet. If they wave the white flag, five minutes long time, score one now. They're capable. I mean, they've had their chances. They're still, oh, it's still the in the game there. The game's the, definitely far from over. They've got to be the next... Oh, definitely, without saying, need to be the next goal. Don't try and do it. Just do it in ones. It's also a thought of whether coach Nick Downs doesn't want to uh, show his hand, some would say, uh, before potentially using fifth man in a semi-final, final situation. Oh, big cannon of a shot, but picked off by Canterbury again. Okinawa with the shot from distance. Absolute cannon too, wasn't it? Antimov was across to cover it. There had been another foot closer. So, 4.30 remains. to just shut up shop. It's about concentration now. Just short waves. Players coming on, giving it their all. And oh, nice skills, nice skills. Turn, shoots. Can't get the goal in. It's been very much the case, hasn't it? The defence has been rock solid in the middle for Canterbury. Good hustle, good urgency from the boys in red. Tyler Clink has been superb today. A big body. When that target has turned, he's always there. He's always ready. Very hard to find a gap. Oh, 
Well, this will mean a lot to the Cantabrians. What a big boost this will give them. This will show them what they're capable of. Because really in that first half, the goal was against the run of play. And that's what you talk about. Teams that are not used to losing. How do they deal with adversity? And I always say you've got to learn how to lose to learn how to win. And that goes out. And Canterbury now just pumped. You can see what this does mean. Oh, shot across the goal too, but cleared off the line again. Anton off now, he's got plenty of time. Decides to move it quickly. Come down that left-hand side. And now, they need to be at their very best. Oh, getting absolutely muscled off the ball here by Finton Montgomery Monty Joseph. It's a long name. We'll just call him Joseph. Thing is, what I actually like about the Canterbury goals, just beautiful goals, all both of them. And the three of them actually. First two were superb. I think what the Canterbury coach will be liking about them is that they're very much goals in which he would have envisioned. Goals in which they step on, they win the ball high. Besides potentially that first goal, where there's a lot of build-up, but they step on and win the ball high off Hawkins City and then counter and then they tuck it away. So, just over two and a half minutes remaining, just under two and a half minutes remaining. They push now. And here is the goal scorer, Jacob Grosvenor. He has a couple of goals today. Didn't he enjoy it too? Now, City, do they believe? We have seen stranger things in sport. We go back to the 99. Champions League final between United and Bayern Munich and what happened to that one? Oli Gunnar Solskjaer and Teddy Sheringham scoring an injury time. Liverpool. A miracle in Istanbul back in 2014 on 3-0 at half time came back and won that. It's a long time ago, Mark. It's never a long time ago, mate. Nice it only seems like yesterday. Comeback win for Manchester United this morning as well. I don't know if you Gates saw that. Fulham, yeah, yeah three-one. Yeah. After trailing one-nil and then discipline costing Fulham. I think the only man in an Auckland City shirt enjoying this is probably the uh, the Twitter man right now. He's been working overtime in the past few games. I well, look at that defence though. It's just a brick wall in the middle, isn't it? Like they need to play the angles, they need to play out wide, try and somehow draw those defenders out. Another one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Anton on off too good. Shuts that attacking down. Got one minute 40 remaining. It's Canterbury leading Auckland City 3-0. And what many would well, I think what we could say is an upset. Remember these two teams met last night. Sean Morgan a big loss though. I think what you're realising is just how big a loss Morgan is. He's a player who doesn't just have size, but he's got that finesse. He's the complete player. So Papakura will come up against Central next in the women's clash here on day three. Now, trying to break away. Come back down. And just hacked out. And no fifth man. So I think you might be right there, but Nicholas Downs, Samuel Kaur, the coaching. Happy to probably concede this one and not give too much away in terms of the fifth man, knowing that in a couple of weeks' time in Wellington, the stakes will be a little bit higher. As you say that, you can just see in the huddle, number nine, Stephen Ashby. Pink shirt in his okay, hand. Yeah, he's coming on now, yep. It's an interesting one. A minute 20 to go. Whether you have enough time in a minute 20 to find three goals, I, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure well, around that decision. One of the dangers is too, though, isn't it? When you've got the fifth man, you're going to sit back defensively. The ball's not going to go out. And you're happy just to let the shot clock run down. That's also one of the 
like downsides, I guess, when you're under pressure. And so if you're going to play it, yeah, four or five minutes does seem a little bit more logical. Yeah, definitely, because oftentimes you, you break a side down, but it takes, say, 20 seconds or so, 25 seconds to yeah. get that shot away because you build it up, you drag a team, yeah. and then you find that pass. But, yeah, but it's not going out. It's not the stop start on the shot clock. Canterbury will just be happy here to park the bus. I won't be even afraid probably to concede one goal. It's going to be hard to score three. They haven't been able to score in what? Almost 38 minutes or over 38 minutes. So why can they score three in a minute? And so now we are seeing the fifth man. And it is Ashby Peckham who comes on. He acts as the goalkeeper if they do turn possession over. The shot does come. Oh, another brilliant piece of goalkeeping in defence, but the corner comes. I'm sure that came off the goalkeeper, off the defender. And now... Had a twig, chance comes, and now... Oh, how did that stay out? And look at the Auckland City players, just their head in their hands, the frustration. When it's not going your way, it's not going your way. I think and you've you just got to give Tyler Clink so much credit, the Canterbury goalkeeper. Seeing this 30 seconds of fifth man, it starts to question even more so, why would they not bring it out earlier? It's very dangerous. It's their most likely chance of scoring. Yeah, because there is just now 36 seconds. They're not going to score three in 36 seconds. So. No, siren's gone. Referees still talking about it. And it is all over. And it is Canterbury who have beaten Auckland City. Still 20 seconds, no, 20 to, seconds go, to go. Okay, my apologies. Looking up at the timer here. And it what's happened there is a two touch has been called on Stephen Ashby, the goalkeeper, the fifth man goalkeeper. So a little bit of a mistake by the ref here. Auckland City not very happy. You're not allowed to touch the ball twice as a goalkeeper in your own half. Stephen has touched it in the attacking half and then gone back and touched it in his half. A little bit of a mistake, but Canterbury will take it. They take the time out, 20 seconds to go. Very much box seat right now. Oh, referees, well, they make mistakes too, and that's not a mistake that's going to change the context of this game. The referees been excellent too, and Ben Norman, Philip Rogers, and Jake Brunton. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Uh, 20 seconds remaining. Looking for another long ball. Almost pays off again. Man, they've just been good, haven't they, in terms of just getting behind the defence canopy to date. And now Auckland will come away with this. Brought down by Canterbury. That'll be their fourth foul, but just seven seconds remaining. Not afraid to still keep it physical. Not sure that Mark Zimmerman in the 14 shirt. So that's a kick in. They look to go long. City come away. And they finally do get one right on the buzzer. And it will be three goals to one. It will count. It will stand. And so 3-1. Finally, Auckland do get one in the back of the net. But it is all about Canterbury. They reversed the result from last night in a very good display, in a courageous display. And for Auckland City, well, they'll go away. They'll have to ask themselves a few questions. No wonder how this one got away from them. It was very much contrasting halves. Goal that came against the runner play to a degree in that first half. And then an early second goal. 
And Auckland never really came back from it. But it is Canterbury Dragons who end up beating Auckland City by three goals to one here on day three of the Ford Futsal Super League live from Trust Arena in Waitakere. Special thanks to our expert comments, Oban Hawkins. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range, and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern, recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust for years and years. Welcome back to the Truss Arena here in Henderson and West Auckland for this women's match here in the Ford Futsal Super League between Central and Papakura City. There is the Papakura City side in the blue strip. And across the other side of the halfway line, we've got the young Central side looking for their first win of the season. It's been a tough year for them and it's been a tough weekend for them as well, having lost both of their matches so far. Uh, to Waikato Bop and also to Papakura, who they've met for the first time this weekend a couple of days ago and lost by four goals to one. So the starting lineup for the two teams are Papakura uh, with Brown, Anthony Wright, Bennett and Reddy and Central with uh, Walker, Cleal Harding, G, Green and Smith. So a lot of tired bodies here today at Trust Arena. I think we're seeing that in the first couple of matches. It is coming off an exciting men's match where the uh, Auckland City team, one of the top teams in the country, are beaten by Canterbury United 3-1. And uh, talking to some of the players from the women's match as well, that's the first thing they're saying is how tired their bodies are. Uh, some of these teams playing six matches over the weekend um, because of the effect that the Cyclone has had on the draw this season. And one team particularly badly affected uh, are those women in green there, a Central, who were hit harder than any other team they couldn't train they couldn't play and so it's been an especially a difficult weekend for them so they'd love to at least get a point out of this match their only point so far the season was a draw uh, some weeks ago uh, but all of the other matches have uh, ended uh, unfortunately in defeats losing 2-3 to Waibop and 1-4 uh, to Papakura so this is the second encounter with Papakura the South Auckland team who had a large contingent of supporters complete with uh, drums and other musical instruments here yesterday a bit quieter today and Central on attack first minute of the match and away comes Papakura again a nice tackle there from tall figure of Holly G so I don't think we'll be seeing players sprinting up and down the court today as we have in the first two days. Uh, and we can put that down basically to Cyclone Gabriel. But the organisers, New Zealand Football, really had no choice but uh, to use this weekend here with all of the teams together from the league uh, to get all the sides up to scratch, as it were, with the number of matches they played. So it has meant some teams have had a very tough schedule, others not so tough. Right, pushing it through to the teammate uh, Hannah Reddy, but it goes out over that back line. So just under two minutes of the match have gone so far. Two 20-minute spells, of course, with the stop clock. So it takes around about 40 minutes. And I had a lot of problems yesterday with the venue scoreboard, but uh, it looks to be functioning again today. But uh, we can't get as is said a feed of that scoreboard into our coverage so we'll just have to give you 
information about time lapsed and the scores from our commentary position here. This, virtually all of the central squad are made up of teenagers, including a 15-year-old, the tall figure of uh, Isla Cleal Harding. Very quiet start to the match so far. No real scoring opportunities for either side, but um, as I said, eight or nine of this squad in the green schoolgirls, and really only most of them are only 16 years of age, so it's very much a junior team. Yeah, Isla Cleal Harding, 15, remarkable. Tall figure at the back there, number two with the ponytail. And their captain, uh, Grace Smith, number 12. Papakura again with the captain uh, Jana Bennett looking for some options there in the middle of the court. Now an early opportunity here for Papakura. But nice work there by this central goalkeeper Sophie, Sophie Walker just sliding that left leg along that back line enough to deflect the ball away from the goal mouth. But they do get the corner from that action. And here's a long volley from Bennett but she manages to regather it. Jana Bennett but Central captain uh, Grace Smith doing some good work there again, but conceding a second corner. Yeah, I think there's another opportunity too. It'll come down to that depth on the bench, and maybe that is where Papakura probably have the measure at the moment. You've talked about just how young the central side is. You feel exuberance is good, but when you get to this level, you also want that level of experience. And they certainly bring that to Myla Green, who was the MVP at the Under-19 Girls Youth Nationals in 2022. So there she is there, just touched the ball there, number nine, Myla Green. And not only just going back to the problems that Central have had and their inability to train, or more importantly, I suppose, to play matches because of the effects of the cyclone, that these players tend to come from Hawke's Bay, uh, and also from Manawa too, but they do their training basically in, in Hawke's Bay. Um, but not only were they affected by the cyclone, uh, but um, even in good times, even when the weather doesn't play a part, they're only able to train once a week because of the miles or m kilometers that these players, many of them have to travel just to get to training. And so that, then you dump a cyclone on the top of it uh, and it has been I think to yes there it is the first goal of the match anyway I think it might be from their from their captain uh, Grace Smith who rather casually just uh, threw a foot at that ball and it threaded its way into the back of the net so well done to the young girls from Central North Island. Well, that's what you do against better sides. When you come up against the defending champions and maybe you're a young side, you've talked about the adversity they have faced. Get up early, score. See how now Papa could deal with it. How do they deal with finding themselves behind? Because it's not something they're often used to. And it's a really good start for the Central outfit. Three minutes into the first half and Central up by one to nil. And if they are feeling a bit tired, That'll give them an injection of energy. <laughs> Nothing like a goal to put you in front when you haven't won a match all year <laughs> to find a bit more adrenaline than otherwise you, you might be able to muster up. But to Papakura, two wins and two losses uh, this weekend. So they've had a pretty good run of things. We'd like to finish with a win, of course. Uh, Maxine Cooper, who's come on. Some subs being made here. There's Jana Bennett, number eight, the captain of the Papakura side. Bennett again, good work. Taking the safe option there. Back to a goalkeeper, Karina Brown. Yeah, wonderful talent, Karina Brown. Uh, she is an outstanding goalkeeper, Karina Brown. East Coast Bays last year lost the final in a penalty shootouts against Papakura and now part of this Papakura setup. One or two very good goalkeepers. Of course, the other being Danielle Bradley, who has played for the futsal fans. So there will be plenty of buzz on the bench for the central side as the coach starts to make a few substitutions. 
but it's a long way to go. We've only had just under five minutes of play. Just one goal in the match so far. Scored in the fourth minute. Oh, and a second goal has come now. And now Papakura have some questions to ask. Well, again, that came really out of nothing. And as I said to before, these uh, players telling me this morning here that um, the overwhelming feeling they're all having is one of tiredness. And I think um, we're seeing that in this Papakura side at the moment. There just isn't much spark at all about them, either on defence or on attack. And having said that, uh, a volley fired there from... Uh, Caitlin Turner, but up into the empty seats behind the goal. Yeah, well, Marvin Eakins, who's really one of the real gurus in futsal in this country, the national coach. He is the coach of this Papakura outfit. He won't be happy by what he's seen. Another re really good piece of goalkeeping, this time by Sophie Walker. And Sophie Walker. She was part of the girls' winning team at the Youth Nationals in December of 2022. So, just 16 years of age. Many of green jerseys back in that uh, goal circle, defending for their lives now with a two-goal advantage. Papakura. They're going to try and find some sparks, some energy, down by two goals. She's got plenty of incentive now. As uh, Cat Pretty tries to find some room into that circle, but uh, defence is holding good. Good scrap going on there at the moment with uh, Ma Bun, Cambodian player in the side from Papakura. Well, Papakura will build a lot of their play very much around their number seven Maxine Cooper they've got you know wonderful player in Shavanti Anthony but what they do have they've got their physical physicality so they can push Hannah Reddy up into that up into that pivot role along with Cat Pretty they can be targets very hard to defend against they've got that physicality to hold the defender up six minutes gone in the first half of this match here between the Papakura in the blue and the little fancy central side but uh, in the throws are putting together one of the big upsets of the weekend haven't had a win this season from their previous nine matches um, and uh, probably will struggle I think even with a couple of wins to make the playoffs one more weekend of futsal before we get to the playoffs on the uh, second or first of April Papakura nicely placed at the moment in fourth place so they wouldn't want to drop a match as well it just would make their task a little more difficult for the final national series before the playoffs you've got to say that automatically i think we've seen just a lot more cohesion from the central team than perhaps we saw yesterday against Wybop. but one thing that i think Papa could have done. Just need to be patient here. Just take their time. Just continue to maintain their shape and play to the pattern asked of them. So Olivia Harding with the kick in. Back to Hannah Roberts across the far side. Now opportunity here for. Papakura, and that's probably the hardest shot we've seen with a bit of venom in the boot there of uh, Cat Pretty. But it's amazing, isn't it, Brendan? We've both been out there and had a little bit of a kick around. It's a hard ball, but the velocity that they can yeah. get on it with the left and right foot, but with, with very little wind up, too. Yes, you think you'd be wanting to wear a pair of those sort of heavy rugby boots, <laughs> but uh, with the weight of the ball, but doesn't appear to be just the basic sort of kind of sports shoe. 
going to pause one of Borna's retreat. It's one of the functions that players have to do oh. is to retrieve the ball. And another opportunity here for Papakura, but um, not terribly convincing, but effective for defence coming from Central. They managed to foil that right on the goal mouth and settle things down. The ball at toe. Yeah, I, I wonder whether Papakura here maybe just need to press a little bit higher on defence. They don't seem to be putting a lot of pressure on the central side in the backcourt and giving central just a little bit more time to try and build. Yeah, well, I can come back to the fact I just wonder how much that they've got left within themselves after the two, now, two days. Now, this is the third day of uh, competition. These are all of the top teams in the country, all of the men's and women's teams. And so if you are in the bottom half of the draw, you're really having to work hard. And nearly a third goal there, the goalkeeper struggling to get onto her feet but um, finally they managed to work it out of their own half and eight minutes of the first half gone apologize for the fact that we're unable at this point to uh, bring you the score key which has been sitting uh, in the top left hand corner for the previous weekend the pre previous matches this weekend but uh, we'll keep you posted two nil is the score goals coming in the fourth and sixth minute for Central, looking, as we said, for their first win of the season. They've just had one draw from their previous nine matches. So this would be a very nice way to kind of conclude events as well. again for Papakura, nice work coming here from uh, Ella James managed to thread away past a couple of defenders uh, but the defence held so another corner so they're getting plenty of opportunities Papakura, taken quickly again and uh, Ella James fires in a second shot within as many minutes but to no avail 2-0 up to the halfway stage of this first half of this match. Papakura currently in third place on the points table, so even though they've lost two of their four matches this weekend, uh, they have confirmed for themselves a place in the top four, which is really what this weekend is all about. There's no separate competition amongst the teams. Uh, yes, there's a bit of, uh, I guess, feeling amongst uh, some teams when Auckland plays Canterbury or Wellington plays one of the other major teams from a provincial city but essentially what they are about is accumulating points to get into the top four there's one further round coming up uh, in a fortnight and then on the first week of April the finals get underway which will involve only the top four teams and that's decided obviously on the points table as I said, Papakura is sitting in third place at the moment. So they wouldn't want to drop this match because um, they're only three points clear of uh, Wybop, who are in fourth place, who have had, had a loss today. And talking to their players after the match, they again said they just had nothing in their bodies. I've got to say that goalkeeping today from Sophie Walker this youngster has been superb really has allowed them to keep that 2-0 buffer now chance real opportunity here need to take it though can't do it james Plays again it <laughs> ella james first off the right foot then her left foot but um, full marks to the determination of this uh, defensive unit of central they may be tired and they may their bodies may be lacking in energy but they are finding enough spirit within themselves to hang on to this 2-0 lead yeah it must be hard though isn't it you've already mentioned a five-hour round trip to training due to the cyclone and we've got players that come in from australia hannah robert she's a futsal fern ex-futsal fern she travels from sydney to play 
And then they don't have Michaela Boxer, the goalkeeper. She's out injured. She's a futsal fan. So she's got some real adversity. But they're doing it well at the moment. Opportunity again for Central, but Charlotte Cameron just couldn't get a foot to the ball, losing her footing. And Papakura survive another raid on their goal. Down by two goals to nil. And a lazy attempt there by James, and the ball going dead. So I suppose once they finish here this afternoon, they'll have a long bus trip back to the central part of the North Island. But I imagine most of them will be sleeping for that entire journey. I often say it though, isn't it? That's the important of fitness. It's still the currency of all these sports is fitness, running, jogging. It's not how well you do a session or how well you play a game. It's often how well you back it up. And that is going to be a challenge. Even more so. Key for all sporters show your body in training what happens on game day or race day, try and replicate it. But if you're having to travel five hours to training, you haven't got training facilities, very, very hard for the central team to replicate that. Kick and hope. Mm. Seeing plenty of that today, particularly from Papakura now that they're down by two goals. Uh, but Papakura ringing changes too. So they've brought back on their number 16, number uh, 16, Hannah Reddy. Now, she is very, very good in terms of acting in that pivot role. She's a good target because what she does, she holds the ball well. Allows her team to and there she move is. forward. And again, Shivanti Anthony, also outstanding talent, who's back on court as well in the number two shirt. Eight minutes remaining in the first half here at Henderson. I suppose, given the effects that uh, Cyclone Gabriel has had on some of these teams, North Island teams, it's probably appropriate that they're playing this weekend in West Auckland, <laughs> where we could all sympathise very much with the terrible problems that uh, so many folk have had in places like Hawke's Bay and, of course, um, Central North Island as well, and up here. And my hometown of Moody White. Exactly, yes. And Henderson Valley itself, which is only about a kilometre away from where we are, yeah. uh, absolutely was hammered in the uh, first cyclone. And mm, it barely made much of a recovery when it was set, of course, with the effects of Gabriel. So it's played havoc with many aspects of life in New Zealand, not the least of all sport. So Anthony, number two there, looking to try and move forward. Yeah, it'll be interesting to just see what Marvin Eakins makes of this performance so far. I think the message is, look, you're creating opportunities. Just be patient here. Yep, we've been hit a couple of times, but we're good enough to bring those two back because there's no real panic from the bench at the moment. Not a lot of discussion or frustration from Marvin. Anthony, the tall figure there, comes out of her Foxo position, trying to add a bit of thrust to the attack, but they're just not able to get any clear, clean ball anywhere near that goal mouth. And so they, at best, are just kicking and poking at the ball. And it's uh, suiting Central admirably, being able to foil these would-be attacks. Now, another opportunity here for Papakura, uh, but uh, nicely closed down there indeed by number nine for Central, Miller Green. Did a good job just cutting out that ball. Yep, Miller Green, Holly G, and also Ruby Gurnick. They are members of that under-19 girls team that won the Youth Nationals, so shows that if they can keep this nucleus of players together and just put some years now and layer upon layer uh, certainly going to be a force for the future here comes holly g with the ball the tall figure but uh, anthony foiled that attack as well 
trying the long ball, and that uh, certainly didn't pay much of a dividend for Papakura. So this young, this extremely young and youthful central side, doing themselves a lot of justice here with their play, not just with the two goals that they've scored, but uh, their ability to kind of handle anything that's been thrown at them by Papakura. Bank oh. kill, but uh, to no effect. The intended target there was Abby Wright in the number six shirt. Just not quite enough weight on it, but great enterprise. Another opportunity here for Central as um, Miller Green, and I think, yes, a deflection. And it goes into the back of that net, uh, initially saved by the goalkeeper, and so that's three. Three in 14 minutes. for Central. Wow. Now Papakura are in serious trouble. Tired bodies, mentally feeling very weary, and three goals down. Not the way you would want to finish this tournament. Now it was a good save too from Karina Brown. She just couldn't quite hold on to it, but that's the problem when you're pressing high. That you just open yourself up at the back, and that's the three goals have come is because of this high press that we're seeing from Papakura. Oh. There's a good shove there from uh, one of those central players, but the uh, referee very perfectly happy with it. So play continues. That was uh, Holly G that uh, was casting aside her opponent. Another opportunity. Yeah, this is a somewhat of a surprise. Already had another upset this morning with the Canterbury men's beating Auckland City. A reversal of the result we saw last night. And you mentioned earlier the injury to Sean Morgan, and I wonder just how much that affected Auckland today. They just seem to be lacking something. But as you said, Brendan, I think it's day three. It's fifth game for a lot of these teams. It's fatigue now, so it does become a little bit more a game of chance. Yeah, tired bodies and tired minds. And so the, the mental will that you have to find here is really important. That's what the Papakura have got a call on here. Their bodies probably want to mm. rest and sit down. <laughs> But um, they've just got to find the, the discipline and the spirit within themselves to, to rise above this and get on the scoreboard. Or they can just get themselves a goal before half time, which is five minutes away. That should be their main objective at the moment. One goal, close it down to two goals for the second half. And that's not an insurmountable hurdle to overcome. This is some good work here by Maxine Cooper. Threading away into the defensive circle but uh, couldn't finish it off and Miller Green strong run and uh, laying it on for Holly G but again really good display there from Maxine Cooper they've got to get her involved use the likes of Hannah Reddy Cap Pretty up front but use Hannah Re but use Maxine Cooper as their yeah. playmaker to draw the defenders to create the carnage well, there was an attempt again from Cooper, but uh, not particularly realistic. The pass didn't really find her. I mean, she just threw her foot out, but to no avail. So it remains 3-0. Central have scored more goals in the first half here than they have for the entire tournament prior to this day. So uh, not sure whether there is some... Um, too much weariness of spirit or of body within the central side. They're having their, this is their best performance of the year. Well, manager Annie Kane, Alicia Hayward, they're well led, well coached. Just four minutes left until half time, so time starting to become a bit of an enemy here for Papakura. Interesting to see how this very youthful central side handles the second half. I mean, they can't call on much experience, uh, but they've got a lot of youthful exuberance, which might just get them through uh, this second 20 minutes. Uh, pretty. Pretty. But again, good work there. Back there by the defensive players for Central thwarted again 
They've had their chances though, haven't they? They're certainly not out of this game. And here's another opportunity. But again, the good work of the goalkeeper. She was uh, on her backside, basically, but threw a hand out. And that was enough uh, to deflect the ball. But it was lazy initially from Central. Should never have found themselves in that position. If you're going to clear, clear. And so that is the danger that Cat Pretty provides, that experience. And now set piece opportunity here for Auckland uh, for Papakura. Maxine Cooper going deep into the quarter and again <laughs> that fast reaction, the reflex reaction there from uh, Sophie Walker saving her side again. Sure, the shot was coming from back somewhere near halfway, so she did see it coming, but um, it had plenty of force behind it. Papakura trying to build up something from the back here as they thread their way down the court, but um, Cleo Harding again getting in there and spoiling it. Gurnick is on also as well. Ruby Ottawa Gurnick in number five. And the Miller Green there. Quite happy to let that ball go on the touch. Couldn't get to it. So Cooper with the restart for Papakura. Three minutes left. Desperately looking for a goal here to get them back into this match. Uh, Cooper, Cooper. No way through there. Oh, just wide. I love it. I love it from distance. But it's, it is it is kick and hope, isn't it? Well, a little bit. But sometimes, but, but it is the yeah, element yeah. of surprise in this game. And that's the thing I think I've taken away from it, just how quickly just expect the unexpected. Yeah, we've seen a few of these long shots find the back of the net over the last uh, two or three days. And I remember East Coast Bays last year, their goalkeeper, Garbuglia, coming down almost to halfway and having a shot and scoring one of the great goals on the men's side. Is uh, Cooper again trying to find the pivot, but that could have a bit too much on it. No, well kept in again. Soon, but you just see how Cat Pretty does hold up the defenders when she does move into that Cooper again. pivot role. And they're not taking any prisoners, are they, Central, in, in defence? They are staunch, uh, playing with experience far beyond their years, actually. Interesting, just watching Papakura, they're ringing some changes now, but they're not doing it in waves, they're doing it individually. So rather than bringing on a completely different set of players, which we've seen a lot of the times, taking four off, replacing them with four, now they do that. It's been sometimes just individuals coming on and off. A couple of replacements made there as some new faces come onto the court with just uh, under three minutes left. Still time there, plenty of time for Papakura to try and get one of these goals back to make their task a, a lot easier in the second half. And I'm sure these central defenders are well aware of that. Now Cooper, or James, in the end, but nothing comes of it. Yeah, Razine Golden Boot up for grabs too at the end of the Ford Futsal Super League and acknowledged Razine for their sponsorship. Ford as well, McDonald's. There's the tall figure of uh, Harding who's back on for the last couple of minutes of the match for or first half for Central. You're looking at just drawing those Papakura defenders across too. You've got to be careful there. And three defenders across and you can still manage to retain possession. You open it up on the other side. Uh, City get away with it. What if they do go into half time with a 3 0 advantage? I'm not sure there's anything that their coach needs to say, is there? The less he has to say, the better. Yeah, but it'll be interesting to see at what point then in the game that, you know, maybe 10 minutes to play, just talking to Oban Hawkins, wouldn't be uncommon in a situation like this to maybe see them pull their keeper and play that fifth man. Which would be a real thing I would have thought for Papakura, knowing their history and reputation in this game. Well, we saw a variation of that yesterday in one of the men's matches where the goalkeeper from early on in the game was playing right up the court and he would just get back in time and it occurred to me that uh, it's probably better than 
in some way. No, this is nice work from James. Threads herself past two defenders. It's been a rock though, hasn't she? Sophie Walker and goal. Brilliant today. Wow. Nothing needs to look like getting past she's it. She's sort of seen it like it's almost like a hot air balloon, isn't it? Just over a minute left. And just for the hell of it, Hannah Roberts decides to have a shot from near halfway, in fact, inside her own half. And they've enjoyed a very Good run of position here, Papaku, in the last 10 minutes since that third goal was scored. Now, James again. James cannot get past Sophie Walker. She must look like the Berlin Wall, I think. <laughs> yeah, but this Papaku players. Auckland, Auckland know that it's coming. If they're just patient, they're coming. It's if they start rushing it that they will find themselves not scoring. So they've just got to do what they're doing. It's got to come surely. There's been enough pressure, enough opportunity. They won't do it doing it that way, though. Don't panic. So into the last minute of play in Central with the best 20 minutes of futsal that they've played this year. I have you, no doubt about that. You, you, I mean, you look at the bench, it's a very young bench here for the Central team, isn't it? You know, ages of 16, 16, 16, 15 year old. And this is where Papa Kura might just have it in that second half. They can go to a more experienced bench. Well, we did have a conversation with uh, Annie Kane, and we should mention her, who's the manager of the central team, who came to us with uh, a lot of very useful information, background information about the team and the club this year. And um, she was almost imploring us, wouldn't she, Martin, uh, uh, to kind of just, you know, show some sympathy for and understanding for the terrible year and difficulties that the central team have had, and put that in the context of where they are on the points table. Yeah, and I think, and I think there's some merit in that as well. Mm. So, without doubt. But so we thank her very much, uh, yeah. and Kane doing an excellent job. It's just a pity, perhaps, that uh, other managers didn't supply us with um, all of this very useful information about the players. And there it is, the Hooter sounds for half-time. Big cheer coming from the central bench. Uh, there'll be an even bigger one if uh, the score is similar after the next 20 minutes, but half-time against very much the run of form this weekend and this season. Central within sight of their first win of the year, leading Papakura by 3-0 at half-time. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. We believe in supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. Ford, 
we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. It is central up by three goals to nil. So Papakura with a lot of work to do in the second half. One, two, <coughs> one, two, three. It's the message I'm sure the coach must have left with his Papakura players. Three goals he wants, and ideally you'd want to get one pretty quickly after the resumption. Yes, no, I don't have any um, cans. You just go. And so there it is. The first goal has come. Just as we were predicting, they need some activity in that goal mouth early. And it has come. From number 16, who's actually... <coughs> Hannah ready so just exactly what the doctor ordered inside the first minute and now this youthful central side 
very little of any experience really to call on and what is going to be now a very tight final 20 minutes of this match yeah just what they needed and so that certainly changes the context now, doesn't it? Three goals to one. They do believe they can suddenly score a second and it is game on. It's anybody's. Yes, I'm sure there's a very different attitude now prevailing amongst this Papakura side. Uh, still two goals behind, but they won't be, I think, feeling quite so defensive or pessimistic about their chances. And another opportunity here and didn't miss by much either. Maxine Cooper was in there trying to get a foot around that ball. And I think uh, Helen Reddy also might have had a tempted toe poke, but Central held on. They were very staunch with their defence in the first half after scoring those three goals. I thought it was really impressive, but um, they might be just a little bit rattled now, suddenly with that goal coming in the first minute. And all of their play, really, since half time, he had a couple of minutes of it, has been inside the Central half. And ooh, that time Sophie Walker relieved to see that ball running past her outstretched hand. Yeah, Jana Bennett. I tell you what, though, Marvin Eakins, the air coach, he was pretty animated at half time. He doesn't get animated, but you could see that there's a little bit of frustration from him. And they do need to build a lot of their play around Maxine Cooper, who has been very good on that seven shirt for them. dispatch the ball to the opposite end of the uh, court just looking a little vulnerable there with a, a rather tepid pass across the goal mouth Jordana Bremner is on there she is number 11 made the pass and got herself close to the defensive circle pushing it back safety first to her own Goalkeeper, Karina Brown. Three goals to one. So it's been producing some exciting futsal this court today with the Canterbury Auckland match preceding it. Four goals. And again, a rather similar look about uh, this match. The underdogs have a good and strong advantage, but this is a more determined and urgent look about for Papakura already in the first couple of minutes of this match. There's another shot off the left foot there from uh, Hunter Reddy, and it didn't miss by much. No, certainly Papakura City fighting their way back in, climbing their way back into the light. Really, it's all been them in this first two and a half minutes in the second half, and that pass is a little bit wayward. And Cooper, well, <laughs> she didn't have much chance of getting up there with a central defender all over it, but anyway. There's Reddy again, trying to work her way free. Bremner with the long shot. But to Walker equal to the occasion and goal. Yeah, danger here is when you start to get this level of dominance is that it doesn't just become about the individual constantly, the individual shooting. Still got to play the structure, still got to play futsal at that top end of the court. Cooper, uh, feeding all well there. Bremner couldn't get a pass to Cooper and intercepted there on a strong run coming from Green. So they are doing some good constructive stuff on defence, which marked their performance along with those three goals in the first half. And subs made yeah. in the fourth minute of the second half. Yeah. And this is this will be a real test of the ability of the coaches here to read the condition of their players. He knows they're all tired and I suppose the simple solution is that you don't keep the players on the court for very long. No, get them to come on, do sh small shifts, but intense shifts. Anthony is on. Shavantha Anthony, wonderful player of Indian descent there in the number two. Quality, quality futsal player. 
And so they've got a good lineup on at the moment. But it is. Hanging on central by three goals to one. All of their goals coming in the first half came within really a 10 minute spell, the fourth, the sixth, and the 14th minutes. And then Papakua replying in the first minute of the second half. Look uncoordinated there at the top of their defensive circle for Central, but they managed to work it clear. Yeah, interesting Papakurta here looking pushing to push a lot higher, forcing Central at the moment to play a little bit more in their own half. And again, you're starting to now see them looking to try and play that long ball rather than looking to try and maybe thread the needle. Back number two, who's just come on, looking for the pass. It uh, just gets away from her, but now she's back in control. So again, a big volley. Slammed straight into the advancing player from Central, who was uh, Ruby Ottawa Gurnick. And now Gillen. And now Gillen, number four, haven't seen much of her in this match, so uh, coach is trying to keep players fresh in that first half and we'll probably see a lot more of them in the second. Shivanti Anthony. Giving them a lot of time, aren't they? Not really pressing height. More than happy for Papakura just to take their time and play out from the back. Not really wanting to come into Papakura's half on defence. So Gillen. Anthony. Pretty. The shot can again might be tempted to have a long shot there. She was relatively free of any position players anywhere near it. So she thought, well, she's got time to line that up. Didn't miss by much either, just over the top of the far post. Yeah, slowly just starting to break the central defence down. And now this is where depth on the bench will be important because you're right, the fatigue levels will kick in. I mean, they're tired anyway from the number of games they're playing, but fatigue is just going to kick in any game anyway in the second half and that's where it does come down to bench and that's where Papakura you run through the ages of the central team you know 16 16 16 you know you've got Cleo Harding there who's just 15 years of age Anthony again controlling the defensive half of their court now Barossa is a Brazilian player and she without much doubt would be the smallest player on the court Imagine a fairly dynamic player coming from that part of the world. Anthony looking at her options. Decides that she will take off. And Barroso. Anthony. And now uh, Emily Gillen. Very slow, deliberate build-up here from Papakura, but uh, intercepted. But Anthony is back there, so I think she will let the goalkeeper extract them from that end of the court. Yeah, it's just those lazy passes that are just undoing some of the good work at times. Just not enough, quite enough weight on them, not accurate enough. Chance here for Papakura again, threading the needle. Another shot that goes wide. That time by Cat Pretty. Well, they've dominated possession and territory since half time. They've had seven minutes, but they've only got just the one goal to show for it. And they probably felt that goal came so easily and so quickly after half time uh, that um, they were going to get back into this match very quickly. Mm. But again, we're seeing this determination. Yeah. in defence from this young central side which uh, we saw in the first half as well. Yeah, they've got number four Emily Gillian on and she's a player of quality too. I'd like to see her just get a little bit more involved, Gillian. 
across here on this right side. If you're looking from left to right on your TV screens. And uh, Karina Brown, I'm not sure we've even mentioned her name in the second half. She's been virtually uh, redundant, hasn't she? Well, the, again, you talked about making the changes quickly. High turnover off the bench, and you're seeing that being done. Now the shifts are what only a couple of minutes and they're rotating them. Yes, uh, Ella James back on as well. And Sophie Williams comes on for Savanti Anthony. James trying to find Abby Venmore, but um, unsuccessful. Now on the break, opportunity here for Central. And the control missing from that final phase there from Gurnick. Ruby Arawa Gurnick for Central, and it still remains 3-1. Just the one goal since half-time, eight minutes have elapsed. And at last, we've seen Karina Brown with some work to do, not much. Sophie Williams. For Ben Moore, Ben Moore back. Oh, getting shunted. Bennett, the captain. Uh, referee say that's okay. So really good defending there, staying between herself and the attacking player, allowing the ball to run out. And now just a bit of a chat. This is to uh, Nida Mabun, Cambodian player, in the central side. A smile on her face. So. I think she's too upset with what the referee had to say. Just a little reminder. And she is back into the fray. But uh, Kua, a little confused here as they try to work their way out. And James, one of the more experienced players on the side. Nice pass as well from James. She cuts and passes and is back with possession. He yeah, probably needed to hit that first time. A bit more construction. Ah, here we see it. <laughs> the goalkeeper decided to get into the fray. Um, uh, I, think I can't help but think that's a sensible thing to do when you're in a situation like Papa Kura, you're down by two goals. We're now um, halfway through the second half. Extra body on attack. Um, does come with some risks, of course. Williams. There's James, and good save again by the green goalkeeper, and another opportunity there, but just a little hesitant. Jana Bennett, the captain of Papakura, and the ball spilled away. Yeah, really good opportunity. Again from this Papakura City side. Just got to continue to do what they're doing. Goals will come. Still 10 minutes, 56. At what point do we maybe see them go to that fifth man? Well, she's, uh, so Karina Brown's come high already up into the halfway yeah, line here. Yeah, she's made a couple of forays up, but now she wisely just retires back to her territory the opposition with the ball and they would have noted where she is as well and be hoping to exploit the risk that she's taking from leaving her safety zone Williams, but no, Walker just, there, ready for it. Yeah, just wondered whether she needed to hit that first time. Just hit it first time, just taking that extra touch and in doing so, just... Oh. And James has got that elusive second goal. 
Ella James with a shot which had plenty of conviction about it as well and just had enough speed on it. Too quick. Well, that's from the set piece, Brendan, and that's what they're looking to try and do. So 3-2, it's very much game on with 10 minutes to go. Now Central need to find something here. They've got to play positively. You sort of feel at times maybe they've just shut up shop a little bit. They're certainly not playing with that fluidity we saw in that first half. Yes, it's all been Papakura in the second half. Uh, as we said, the goalkeeper for Papakura has hardly touched the ball. And it's all been uh, down this part of the court. And the momentum now with Papakura. They've been out of the match, basically, right up until now. Um, but uh, suddenly, things have changed. And as we mentioned before, this is a very youthful side that Central have got out there. The entire squad, apart from a couple of players, are teenagers, young teenagers, and they won't have much experience to call upon here. Yeah, but as we said, Marvin Eakins making the changes quickly. He's rotating the bench. He's saying, look, go on there, play with intensity for two, three minutes, and then we'll set you out. And it's a good tactic from the experienced Futsal Ferns coach, Marvin Eakins. Brenner, Bennett, the captain. And there is, I suppose you really do want your captain on, don't you, for, I would imagine, most of the last nine minutes. There she is at the back. But yes, the thing that Patrick Correct certainly can't afford here is to concede another goal. They've worked hard and well and uh, deserve their two goals in the second half because they've dominated possession and the in the territory. Yeah, also, but what Papa could have got to make sure too that they don't press too high and start to think, well, we're dominating this, and then you know provide that counter attack where Central have been very good. Interesting to see that Maxine Cooper has dropped back in that fixo role for Papakura. Ready, still with it, and yes, Nutmeg, the goalkeeper, and has tied the match up at 3 all. Wow. So it's just taken them 11 minutes, actually, to score those three goals. And you just wonder, where were they in the first 20 well, minutes? Well, I think what we've seen, Maxine Cooper in that fixo role at the back, she's just controlling things. She's just passing. She's almost acting in that sort of, if it was in football terms, that central midfield role, being the distributor, being the playmaker. There are two problems here now for Central. They've got to spend more time in their opponent's half, which they're struggling to do since half-time. And they've got to find, well, you'd think, at least another goal because Papakura is starting to look unstoppable here. They've just got this momentum. And uh, because they're camped inside their opposition half, uh, inevitably the goals you think are going to come. We've had three of them in ten minutes. But this is just a really good lesson for everyone watching this. Just be patient. Stick to your structure. Stick to your guns. Don't drop your head because you find yourself behind. And this will be a really good learning curve for Papakura City. This will give them some belief. I don't think Brown has had to make one save in this second half, which is now 12 minutes old. But a very different story at the other end is... Already tries to muscle the way up into that uh, defensive circle, but yeah, you feel a Auckland City score here now. The heads might just drop from this young side. You get that. That's an age. And thing. There's a chance. Two of them there. A little bit of confusion amongst the two Papakura players at the top of that defensive circle. <laughs> they were competing with each other. That's Sophie for the ball. Yeah, Sophie Walker though, really, really good in goal. Should be a couple of that she might be disappointed with, but she has been a superstar today. But no pace on that shot, and it remains at three all. Six goals we've had so far in the 32 minutes of futsal, and I think we can probably rest assured we haven't finished with the goal scoring in this match. And hungry for more, Papakura, you can kind of sense it. Now, which is the urgency which was just not there in the first half. 
the rhythm and the urgency, but it's, both of them are there getting back in a hurry. Cooper doing a very good job as well, but opportunity. There we are for the first time in the second half. Yeah, Maxine Cooper's really just taking control here for Papakura. She's their best player. Her best to foil him, of course, is Sophie Walker. Another fine save. Another corner. Yeah, really good effort from Abby Wright on that right foot too, down that right side. Seven minutes left. A little bit ambitious there. From Maxine Cooper. There's some real consternation, I imagine, on that central bench because if they are able to win this match, it will lift them off the bottom of the points table as well. And uh, they will join Southern United on four points. Yeah. But, uh, if they're held to a three-all draw, I'm afraid they still remain in possession of the wooden spoon, even if they do get only their second point of the season. Uh, but a win, very important. So they're only one goal away, and they just got to convince themselves again that they can do this. They scored three goals in ten minutes in the first half against these same players. But Anthony's now come on for Papakura just again, showing their depth. They just take take one off, replace like with like. And so Cooper's still on, though. Interesting, isn't it, Sheik? Maxine Cooper still on for another shift in the number seven shirt. So they know how important she is. She has just set the tone, really, in this second half. Papakura as well. Uh, plenty to play for here. They're currently in um, third place, but they can join Capital with 15 points if they win this match. So uh, both at the moment looking in pretty good shape to make the playoffs at the end of the month, start of April. But a win here will help them, and uh, another volley. But uh, nothing to show for it. Seven minutes remaining. And a good shot there from Emily Gillion. She's a really good player, Gillion. She hasn't been as involved. Now here's Miller Green, one of the more experienced players in that central side, but she just couldn't free herself uh, from that uh, little defensive circle, which Papakura put in place, but I say. Yeah, good defence that time, though, from Isla Cleal Harding for Central. Isla, another one of these youngsters at just 15 years of age, but... Ah, look, at the, look at the room all of a sudden. That's been created for Miller Green, but Anthony, steady as a rock. Oh, she, tackle. She, she's a classy futsal player. Barroso, back to Anthony. Position given away. Here's Harding. Going on a nice little run here. Harding manages to keep a footing as well. And oh, in the end, she runs right over the top of the yeah. goalkeeper. Yeah, Karina Brown there just didn't really get down enough and really needed to take that ball. But this is the danger here for Papakuta. They're pressing really high, but they're opening themselves up if they do turn possession over and creating that one on one situation for Central. I notice also that the uh, bench, the central bench has gone very quiet, hasn't it? Yeah, and Shavanti Anthony sitting back there in that fixo roll, steady figure there. What's she going to do? No, she was thinking, I think, of lining up the long shot, but she had time to set it up. But see, just you just notice Cat Pretty there in that forward position, in that pivot role, how she can just hold players at bay. She just has that ability to return her back. Time out. At, yep, and just keep those defenders and allow her players to push. And she's so strong and so physical. If it's not her, it's Anna Reddy. And that is this diversity that I think Papakura do have. I'm assuming the uh, timeout was called by Central and their coach, uh, Alicia Haywood, taking time just to bring the team together again, just to get them into the huddle, get their spirits up, convince them and tell them they can win this match. 
And well, I think they'd be happy if they could come away with a draw too, but they've got five and a half minutes. And well, I, don't, I don't know whether they would be that happy. After being up 3-0, you, you might be right. Yep. Um, at half time as well, being up 3-0 at half time, haven't had a win this year, and have just played the best 20 minutes of futsal they've put together anywhere in the North Island, um, the South Island for uh, the entire season. And suddenly they've just seen it evaporate into thin air. And so their spirits will be down, and I guess that's what uh, Alicia Haywood has detected. So she's had her minute to talk to them and see what they can do. They've got to devise a method of being able to get the ball constructively into the Papakura half rather than just relying on these long balls and the sort of kick and hope approach. But now they have an opportunity here. Costa Harding who's done some good work in this match and Green as well probably been the pick of their side and Barroso laying on a lovely pass there for number 15 Cat Pretty but in fact it was anything but pretty in the end as the shot sailed over the top of the goal well So again, decides should have a shot from a very narrow angle. He's verging on the uh, optimistic. Harding. Yeah, 518. To no one in particular, just sailed through a huge big gap. At the court opened up like the Red Sea in the middle, and the ball sailed right down to the other end of the court. Yeah, nice ball there from Karina Brown. Lovely futsal. But uh, Walker saw it coming. So five minutes and five seconds left in this match. One goal. Both teams desperately searching for one goal. Ah, cry of despair there. Coming from... I think it was... Some Cooper there who... Had an opportunity. Interception. Good work here from the captain. She goes sliding into the goalkeeper who decided to come out really early. Came off the line very early and they clashed. The bodies clashed. Grace Smith who got past her opponent on halfway and off she went. But um, good thinking there from Brown. She saw the threat posed by Smith and decided to confront her on the top of that defensive circle. Which way has the call gone? It seemed to me to be that it was either player was really much at fault. They were just competing for the ball. But it looks like it is a free kick to. Their yeah, game's been played in good mm -hmm. spirit though. They haven't seen a lot of fouls. Yeah, I've just been <laughs> Anthony looking for pretty on the far side. Barossa pushes the ball back to Anthony and a bad shot either. It had Walker stretching as high as she could with her arm and the end result is Anthony will now come and effect the corner. Just four minutes and 40 seconds left. Now here's the goalkeeper having the shot herself. Yeah, that's what we sort of saw a little bit yesterday, acting in that fifth man role. Yeah. Clearly has backs herself as an out-court player too. Now she does drop back just in case they turn position over. So high risk, high reward. And so they continue. They're not going to ring the changes just yet. It's a set piece. So Karina Brown will come up to halfway. So what that clearly tells us as well, that uh, Papakura are not happy just to settle for a draw. You might think after being down 3-0 that uh, they'd be happy with the draw. But... No, they want this win. They realise how tight it's probably going to be after the final round of matches in a couple of weeks to separate those top four or five teams. And three points here will be very important and could be far more valuable than maybe just settling for one. But we'll see. Bennett, the captain. 
across to Karina Brown. Brown still hovering around halfway. Just tucked in there behind Sophie Williams. Still slightly out of shot at the moment, but she's in fact inside the central half. We expect something here from City. They very good at set piece, but didn't quite go to plan. What point do they maybe bring the Karina Brown up and just play her in that fifth man role? They are now, so they go across two here. There she is, number 26, the goalkeeper. That's has a crack at goal good. two, and <laughs> she didn't miss quite much. I think that had beaten uh, Walker. That would have been a stunner, wouldn't it? Would have been one of the great goals. That's the thing with Futsal. A lot of the goals are just stunning. James. But uh, foiled by Topo there from uh, Ruby Gurnick. And Barossa. The kick in. So, Brennan, we've got just under four minutes still remaining. Three minutes, 50. Still plenty of time. to do some work there but uh, away comes Papaguri again there's the captain Jana Bennett and opportunity arose so it's getting it's on a knife edge of this match and uh, I just get the feeling that Central are working their way a little more constructively at the moment towards that elusive goal that they want rather than just relying on a wide Kick from somewhere. So now under four minutes, just over three minutes left. Stop clock, of course, in action here whenever the ball goes out of play. So there's a long ball. There's their captain again. Wasted ball, wasted ball, straight into the arms, comfortably into the arms of the Papakura goalkeeper. And it's getting to the stage now where just kicking the ball around and holding on to position. Oh, look. And a little sloppy in front of the central goal, but they managed to extract themselves from it. And their captain. There will be a corner. So set piece opportunity for Papakura. Hustled. Come now with a shot over the top though. Three second half goals. In reply to three first half goals. Here's Bennett again, the captain. Yeah, took a heavy Most fall too. Yeah, it's a free kick. Oh. So Bennett actually herself calling for a replacement. And on comes, I think, by the little bit of game. It's Maxine Cooper. And there it is. It's worked the little positional change and the deadlock has been snapped. Yeah, wonderful goal. Great patience from Papakura. Haven't panicked this entire game, even though they've been down 3-0. They've just maintained their shape. Their coach Marvin Eakins has just instilled that calmness in them. And now they lead by 4-3. And that's probably the challenge for the central team going forward, is being able to maintain it for 40 minutes. I think they're good for 20 at the moment. But you can also put that down to the fact they haven't been able to train all of those external factors as well that have gone with Cyclone Gabrielle and some of the adversity that they have faced. And I think also the, the lack of experience, because it's a youthful side, and also the lack of experience in this situation where they've had 
to defend a three goal advantage. This is something that they haven't experienced this year. And so they just have frozen a little bit, haven't they? The old mm. possum in the headline headlights kind of stature yeah. that they've uh, assumed. Unable to get the ball out of their own half. Um, probably just trying to defend too much. And now here's Grace Smith again. She's had a couple of good runs in the second half. Haven't come to anything. I like the energy being shown too by Sophie Williams for Papa Kuda since she's come on in the number nine shirt. She's been lively. She looks fresh. So two minutes left. They don't play extra time in futsal. Come finals they will, but certainly not in the preliminary rounds. But, um, from the corner. Easily gathered in by Sophie Walker. It looks like she might have suffered a bit of a knock. Yeah, took a knock to the kidneys by the looks of it. So it might just be winded a little bit, Karina Brown. Well, the scary thing is for them that they do have they do have the quality of Danielle Bradley to go to. So a minute 46 to go. So just a bit of concern for Karina Brown. Hope you are enjoying coverage here on day three of this Ford Futsal National Super League. Saw a really good game earlier this morning when we saw Auckland City get beaten by Canterbury. A reversal in fortunes for Canterbury who lost that same fixture last night by five goals to three. But Karina Brown looks like she's back up and ready to go again. Doesn't exactly look 100%. I think she was just winded more than anything. And anyway, she's quickly back in action. James laying it on for Cooper, but... Seems to be able to foil it. It's another corner. They've scored one of their three goals from a set piece from the corner. And there was nearly the fourth as Ella James just clipped the crossbar but it bounced back into the field of play. Uh, more physicality and more urgency now coming from Central. Only got just a minute left. There's an opportunity here, but oh, a wee bit slow getting onto that ball. Holly G. Yes, there's a lot of tired bodies out there for sure. And you'd far sooner be in the situation of just hanging on to the ball than trying to create a scoring opportunity. So, advantage here very much with Papakura. Sophie Williams again goes on a bit of a run. And uh, we'll also get the kick in. Yep, minute 14 remaining. So, time here for Papakura just to hold position, run that clock down. But still wanting to play positively, still prepared to press and go forward. Now, where's the support? No one there at all, so she has to push the ball back with a minute to go. And she's got the ball on halfway. And just, I think, depressed of spirit and of will at the moment. This will be a terrible disappointment for Central. Their hopes must have been so high at uh, half time up by three to nil yeah clock ticking down 45 seconds can they find that miracle do they believe there's green with the shot she's probably been their best player on attack but uh the angle too narrow yeah and karina brown i think was across on that near side Can't seem to be able to string passes together on attack. James, again the left foot of Sophie Walker, moving the foil. 
30 seconds left now. Yeah, she's been good, Ella James, today since she's come on in the times that she's had. Now Karina Brown happy just to bring it back. She'll run the clock down. James again. Going for one more shot, maybe. Just 12 seconds left. The wrong end of the court for Central. Yeah, four goals in that second half. Great comeback. Keep it. Into the arms. And now only one central player on attack. And there it is. The Hooter indicates that's full time. And a come from behind win. One of their probably best performances overall this weekend. Down 3 0 at half time, but have prevailed with a very fine second half performance and take the match by four goals to three and commiserations to this uh, young central side who just played beyond themselves in that first half probably couldn't believe the scoreline at half time up by three goals to nil scored as many goals in the first 20 minutes of this match than they had from the matches they played over the previous two days but couldn't hang on ran out of energy i suspect and once the goal started coming uh, their attack fell apart fell away and in the end, uh, second half dominated by Papakura and worthy winners by four goals to three. And don't go away, folks, because up next it is Canterbury United Dragons up against the Bay of Plenty Surge. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more here from Trust Arena. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern, recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The FIFA Women's World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Points table. of fourth place which is what this weekend is really all about all of these teams that are here trying to get enough points to go to Wellington in the fortnight for the final round before the playoffs and only the top four teams after that round in Wellington will contest the final so three points here for a win one for a draw so three points very vital when you're buried in the middle of the court or middle of the points table which is the case here for Bay of Plenty. Canterbury, a slightly stronger position. They're in fourth place at the moment. But also, breathing down their neck is uh, Waikato. So a win here would just give them a bit of breathing space uh, before going into the final round. Pass nicely intercepted by Canterbury and turning the fence into attack. Free kick goes to Canterbury just inside their own half. Cameron Emberton. Emberton again. Skips past his defender. Can't believe that the referee has awarded possession to Serge. He's convinced it came off a Bay of Plenty player. It's not the way the uh, referee saw it. Mr. Sean Lau. Bay of Plenty. Trying to work their way out of their own half. Two minutes of the match gone so far. No score in this clash between the teams currently in fourth and sixth place in the seven man Ford Futsal Super League.
going to be United goalkeeper Hamish Mitchell who likes to play the unofficial role as a fifth player now interception here the support two players oh but the pass was hopelessly misdirected Aaron Carter the top goal scorer for Bale Plenty this year unmarked at the top of the circle there but the pass uh, was way ahead of him he had no chance so very good scoring opportunity wasted by by a plenty in just the third minute of the match <laughs> again nice one two there number 14 mark zimmerman trying to work his way into the circle Chris Priest. Two very good goalkeepers here in Priest and Mitchell. And Tristan Kawana, and so Canterbury will get the corner. putting going on there by uh, Finley Cotton and that'll be a free kick and a yellow card so the foul count effectively starts now for Canterbury after that infringement goes into the book by the referee and Captain Mario Ramos a bit too far out to think about trying to send a volley that far so he's looking for some support finds it in the form of Kiyoma Carter Carter again and Ma and well anticipated by Hamish Mitchell he was on the floor waiting for that Two red shirts on him. And nice through ball. Opportunity again here for Bayer Plenty. They are creating opportunities here in the first five minutes of this match with some good constructive build up. And Mitchell getting plenty of work in the opening stands of this game. You see too many of those headers and given the weight of the board it's not surprising but uh, Sam Mitchell there oh, across the far side of the field now along side of him there is his captain Ramos Ramos finds his man inside the circle but uh, couldn't free himself now away comes Canterbury oh excellent work again and there's support here but Ma decided to go on his own might have been better off to have tried to have freed the pass to the man unmarked on the near side Emma Akbar so again another scoring opportunity created by the surge by a plenty surge and their coach I'm sure will be heartened by what he's seeing here Tries to get away 
away from Bailey, but Ma still on the ball. And going to be able to get back in a hurry here. And it was excellent work there by Hemi Innes. Priest. Again, a nice long ball. Uh, and the pass goes astray. And they're appealing the surge for a penalty there as one of their players hit the ground. But... Um, Nothing doing, says the referee. Ma again. Akbar. So on the run of play from the first five minutes of this match, it's certainly the surge. The uh, lower ranked of these two teams that have had the better of this match so far. Mong Ma. From Myanmar. goalkeeper trying something different finds a player unmarked and there is the shot coming from big Sam Mitchell but uh, the defender had got back there smart thinking from uh, Hamish Mitchell he saw his uh, pivot unmarked and used the long ball off the throw which he's entitled to do Charlie Bailey. With the kick in. Bailey again. Trying to find Grosvenor. No problems there for Priest. Moore again. And Akbar. But it goes out across the far side. inside his own half looking for some support finds it in Charlie Bailey Bailey to Grovner and a fully optimistic volley coming there from the category number 12 Jacob Grovner they do at least get a corner out of it and it will be Finton Montgomery Monty Joseph that has just come onto the field of play. Little interruption from the commentator there as he retrieved the ball so the play could get underway. We're right down on the touchline here, so we do get a few balls coming our way. Runs along the ground, I don't mind. I don't want to see anything coming via the aerial route into this commentary desk. More. Back to Akbar, but oh, misdirected pass and Bailey. And the goalkeeper out of position. He was stranded on the floor. And very nice work there, in fact, by Akbar, who managed to foil that shot with his body rather than touching it, which he probably was inclined to want to do, but of course couldn't. And that was uh, nearly fatal for Bar Plenty with a misdirected pass. Canterbury with uh, really their best opportunity so far, but nothing to show for it. Still nil all after six minutes of the first half. delay while they try and find the ball well, they do have more than one but anyway it's back and play for the corner if they have plenty Akbar trying to find Maher on the near side, but intercepted by Bailey for Canterbury. Another opportunity here for Canterbury. The shot coming from uh, Montgomery, but still nothing on the score sheet. 
Bailey. Across to Okawa, the Japanese player in the Canterbury side. They've got a mix of uh, nationalities in this tank, side of theirs. Timeout signs, sounds, and so we'll have the first of this match. Side, of course, allowed one per half, but uh, nothing to show from either side on the score sheet after the first seven minutes of this match. They are plenty, probably creating more opportunities. Canterbury have had one or two, but some good constructive play from Bay of Plenty. And uh, should probably have had at least one in the back of the net from these opportunities that have come their way, but. Just the final pass going astray, the final touch not there. So players from England, Japan, England, Japan and Brazil in the Canterbury side. Of course, uh, Okawa from Japan, Finley Cotton from England and Daniel Ribeiro from Brazil. And across the other side is Ama Akbar for Bay of Plenty Surge from Saudi Arabia, Mario Ramos from Brazil, and Mong Ma from Myanmar. Two Ma brothers from Myanmar in the wider squad for the Bay of Plenty side. Carter. Ma again. Player on the court for Bay of Plenty. That's Daniel Watts in action for the first time with a volley which thunders into the side net. So Ma crashes into Aaron Carter, looks at the referee with his arm out, looking for a, a free kick, but nothing given. Oh, that's nice work there indeed from Bailey. Managed to control that ball, but couldn't hang on to it after he'd done all the good work. And managed to free the ball from his opponent, but here comes Cattery again. Nice run from Sam Mitchell. Not wasting any time, and it's paid a nice dividend. <laughs> Charlie Bailey, who's probably been the pick of the Canterbury side so far in this match, um, on hand. No time wasted at all from the corner and just slotted it past Priest, the Bay of Plenty goalkeeper. So, first goal of the match coming in the ninth minute. Probably a little against the run of play because I mentioned it. Bay of Plenty would have been more constructive of the two teams and now and there's number two two in two minutes and it was Kose Oikawa the Japanese player in the Canterbury side that uh, with his twinkle toed footwork deceiving the Bay of Plenty defence and slipping it into the back of the net placement rather than power prevailing there but uh, suddenly Canterbury out of nowhere uh, that timeout seemed to have done the trick and they've unlocked this Bay of Plenty defence. Two quick goals. So Bay of Plenty now ruining, I suppose, those good, very good opportunities that they've squandered so far in this match. As away goes Finn Gobset, but the uh, whistle had gone. Plenty. 
But a quick corner taken. <laughs> they were keen to get underway because the goalkeeper had gone to retrieve the ball. Had given it to the Bay of Plenty player, but he was still out of court. So they took it quickly, and Mitchell sprinted across back uh, to his comfort zone. And nothing ventured for Bay of Plenty. And near thing there as again it uh, misdirected shot but it uh, comes off the crossbar and that would have been a rather fortuitous goal had it been scored but nonetheless these deflections can happen but way goes Catherine here comes Ricardo again one goal to his credit so far in this match and a very elusive very quick footed got away from his opponent and uh, managed to extract the corner as well Canterbury. Mitchell trying to create something out of nothing but uh, really had no angle to work with there so Finn gops it with the corner where Kawa coming in at high speed Sam Mitchell. Gops it, gops it in there. Two Canterbury players. Monty, Montgomery. And another shot from Okawa, who's been a very busy player since he's come on the court. Quickly scored a goal and has had a couple of other shots as well. And the Canterbury hit by two goals to nil. Been against the run of play for sure, but if you can't make the most of your opportunities, you probably don't deserve to be leading in the match. And that's been the tale of Bo Plenty for the first half of the match so far. And probably giving some credit also here to the Canterbury defence, which has done a good job at foiling them and just spoiling their work from up the court from Bo Plenty. So they get another corner. Kawana comes off his opposite number, Finn Gobsett, so another corner here for Bay of Plenty, the surge as they like to be called. And another opportunity there, open goal, the goalkeeper on his knees, but unfortunately Vincent Callister just pushed it wide, just a little bit too anxious and premature with his shot. And once again, Mitchell with the long throw, seeing Ribeiro unmarked down the opposite end of the court, but couldn't find him. Now, nice touch there again from this time, Callister. Walker, Mitchell, goalkeeper. Down goes Gopset, and he'll get a free kick, I think, for that as well. Ribeiro. No way past Callister, but uh, fires a shot. More in hope than anything else. Exactly halfway through the first half of this match between the Bay of Plenty Surge and Canterbury United. And it's Canterbury up by two goals to nil. Goals in the ninth and 11th minute. Goffs it. Emberton. Frustration in the Canterbury side. Richards convinced that that ball had come off about plenty. <laughs> Player. And there's a problem trying to retrieve the ball. It's, it's locked into one of those uh, advertising hoarding sandwich triangles. And when he tripped the triangle up to run it out, it just ran into the one next to it. But it, a little break for all and sundry here after 11 minutes of the first half from the corner. And there we see Priest coming out of his goal, trying to add a little bit of input into the 
Bay a plenty attack. The priest better get back there in a hurry. He has. Gope set. Gope set still on the ball, but uh, shut out all the way by Mario Ramos. And Callister. Shot from afar, but once again, Mitchell showing what a fine goalkeeper he is. No problem from putting that away. Ribeiro on a long run, all the way down to the circle and into the back of the net. One of the best individual goals we've seen, not just in this match, but at any time over the weekend. He started from deep in his own half and off he went. He's got a very strong upper body and he's got leg speed as well. And it carried him past and through the Bay of Plenty defence. And suddenly Canterbury up 3-0. Now all the work ahead of Bay of Plenty, who did so many good things in the first 10 minutes of this match. Oh, well seven or eight minutes of this match and had nothing to show for it were the better team when we went into that uh, first uh, timeout but since then there's only been one team as it were on the court and that's Canterbury three goals and not much more than about four minutes and at uh, three to nil they are very much in control of this match Very gloomy look on that uh, by a plenty bench Out to the left there and Anthony Coach was, was waiting impatiently for half time to come to try and pick this team up off the floor where they are at the moment because Canterbury are dominating them. And that run of Ribeiro's was uh, something else. Across to Carter. Carter again. And Ribeiro using that strength of his again. Another opportunity, but this time Priest decided to come off his line and run to the top of the circle and thwarted the opportunity right there. But um, Ribeiro, he is proving a real thorn in the Bay of Plenty side. We've seen this in other matches this weekend as well. And powerful shot there. Coming from Thomas McMillan, but still nothing on the score sheet for Bayer Plenty. Ribeiro, Brazilian player, so it's no wonder, I suppose, that uh, he's brilliant, both with the ball at feet uh, and his uh, speed. Another opportunity here for Bayer Plenty. They can finish it off, but they can't. Eight minutes of play remaining in the first half in Canterbury, and their traditional provincial colours up by three goals to nil. The goals in the ninth, eleventh, and twelfth minute. So they had a golden run after a timeout was called and immediately uh, it was a different looking Canterbury side on the field and the goal started to come by a plenty now very much on the back foot struggling to get the ball into the Canterbury half which was coming to them with the consummate ease throughout the first seven or eight minutes of this match but now Canterbury robbed them of possession again Carter opportunity here once more and this time by a plenty find the back of the net it's Thomas McMillan, and it's taken them 13 minutes, but they are back in the match at three goals to one. Well, one goal to three, I suppose, from a Bay of Plenty perspective, but that was far better. That was what we were seeing from them in the first 10 minutes of the match, but they weren't able to bring that last vital finishing touch to the move. But that time McMillan got one past this uh, redoubtable goalkeeper, Hamish Mitchell. So that'll do no end of good for the spirits of the Bay of Plenty side, both on the court and on the bench. And if they can 
pinch another before half time. The match once again is wide open. Could not have come at a better time for Bay of Plenty. Their spirits must have been down uh, to have dominated the match like they did and nothing to show for it was depressing enough, I suppose. But then to see three quick goals scored against you would have had them in the pits, but they'll be feeling a lot better about themselves in their game now. Seven minutes until half time. Canterbury, the higher ranked of these two teams on the Super League points table. Not much between them. So a lot at stake here. Three valuable points. Mitchell again for Canterbury. Bailey, one of the goal scorers so far today for Canterbury. Bailey again. Bruce in an ideal position to just uh, tap that away. Carter coming from the back. Daniel Watts all alone. Across to Akbar. There's the goal scorer for Bay of Plenty, this man, McMillan. They do have a good passing game, Bay of Plenty, and we're seeing an example of it here. Stringing a series of passes together. Ma, one of the two Ma brothers on the lineup for Bay of Plenty, and Ma gets there but uh, tangles with uh, Mitchell. He'd come off his line and did a good job. I think he got a bit of a knock as well from the foot of uh, Kama. Kiyama, he's okay, and Mitchell, he looks like a pretty tough customer. Likes to wander far and wide from his home. Um, hasn't had much need to do it so far with the side uh, ahead by three goals to one but in their previous game yesterday he didn't bother about the formalities of the fifth man having to swap the shirt each time he came up the court he just wandered up the court <laughs> of his own free will many times in the match of course if the fifth man is invoked the goalkeeper has to wear a specially coloured jersey when he leaves his goalkeeping position. But here's Mitchell again with an opportunity, and yes! Well, you have to feel for Chris Priest. He was exposed there. He foiled the first attempt. But unfortunately then, from the rebound, uh, Mitchell was on hand and put it away. Fourth Canterbury goal in the first half. And with five minutes left until half time, Canterbury again assume a three goal advantage. Some big men in this Canterbury side, Ribeiro and Mitchell, uh, for example, and uh, they certainly use that strength of theirs when they're on attack. Ribeiro. Being used uh, sparingly in the short time that he was on, he scored a brilliant individual goal. And, uh, parried away by Mitchell. And Finley Cotton, the Englishman in the Canterbury side. Another opportunity here for Canterbury as the shot comes in from Sam Richards. Now Cotton. Richards again. Back to another one of these tall players in this uh, Canterbury side. That's Jimmy Innes. Just under five minutes remaining until half time. Five goals so far. So it's been a very exciting match with plenty of action and plenty of goals. And the five goals, in fact, they're coming in the space of six minutes. First one came after nine, 11, 12, and 15 minutes for Bayer Plenty. And so, sorry, for Canterbury, the sole Bay of Plenty goal coming in the 13th minute. A little header there from Ramos, but uh, no real power of the shot, and Mitchell untroubled. Canterbury again. Mitchell.
again. Some nice into passing here from Bayer Plenty, but Cadbury managed to recover possession. And out of court it goes from the uh, boot of Volley Harris, who's uh, making his first appearance in the match to just come off the bench. Zimmerman. And another corner for Canterbury. With the Jacob Grosvenor about to take it across the far side of the court. A little one two that uh, kind of backfired with the Hemi Innes. Innes, Innes. It's a pretty narrow angle to expect that one to find the back of the net. The long ball, too long, and Mitchell just ambles it across and gets rid of it. Canterbury again looking. Just under four minutes of the first half remaining. 4-1, Canterbury ahead by this uh, comfortable margin. Back to Grovner, playing in the fixer role at the moment. Decides to get up front, and there he is, waiting for the ball. An opportunity, beautiful ball laid on there by the fixo. But unfortunately, Mark Zimmerman just a little hesitant with his trap and gave Priest time to clear the ball. Here comes Canterbury again. Oh, but nice work there from Watts. Great hurry to re resume play. These players, Canterbury players, well, haven't had quite as exhausting a weekend as players from other provinces because they haven't had their program down there in the South Island affected by the weather. Anything like has been the case for teams from, say, Hawke's Bay, Manawatu, or Auckland for that matter. Um, some teams arriving here with only two matches having been played in the series this year. Others have had uh, seven matches, particularly the South Island teams, the Christchurch teams, the Canterbury teams. Grosvenor to Zimmerman. Back to Zimmerman, looking for his options. And this couldn't control that ball. again Zimmerman to Grovner here's Ennis again with a shot intercepted by fast retiring Thomas McMillan the goal scorer for Bayer Plenty that'll result in a yet another corner for Canterbury And in the net it goes, an awful scramble there. And I think in the end it was an own goal, yes, unfortunately. But they all count. And that's goal number five for Canterbury. So it's all come horribly wrong for, or gone horribly wrong for Bayer Plenty, who had the better of the first nine minutes until they conceded that first Canterbury goal. And uh, since then, Canterbury have piled on another four. There's an opportunity there for Mongma, but couldn't get his feet around the ball. As timeout called this time by the Canterbury coach. And half time only two minutes away. Coach deciding he wants the talents, obviously, seen something that he wants his players to be aware of but uh, not doing much wrong at the moment of the lead like five goals to one uh, they probably didn't deserve to be ahead one nil because really they are plenty to have the better of that first seven or eight minutes but you've got to bring finish as we've said it's, it's good and it's constructive to be able to s 
string the passes together, but uh, when you get inside that uh, circle, you've got to have the finish, which they didn't have. And only one field goal coming in about the 13th minute from memory. And Canterbury in total control of this match. Up by five goals to one. And the only consolation is for Bay Plenty, they should have had a couple, at least a couple of other goals to their name. They've done enough and created enough scoring opportunities, but only the one goal to show for it. It's a pretty poor chip. And Ma straight into the goalkeeper. And another penalty. Uh, uh, corner, should I say. Two minutes remaining in this uh, first half is uh, plenty. If they could get one or probably two goals before half time, it seems unlikely that they will. But um, even 5 2 has a distinctly better look about it than 5 1. But Mitchell happy just to push the ball around, I imagine, Canada now. This is Gopset, Goptet. Mongma. Uh, nice work by Thomas McMillan trying to lay the ball on for Mong Ma but um, just putting it into the back of the Caterby defender away they come again McMillan Ma and desperate clearance there off the boot of Sam Richards with a minute and 18 seconds left until half time from the deflection there but which they have plenty would most certainly have taken Chris in a hurry to get that ball down the opposite end of the field but uh, too long too wide so there's some pretty tired bodies out there as well I imagine 20 minutes of futsal takes so around about 40 minutes and though uh, the clock stops, of course, when the ball is out of play. Players don't stop moving, and so it's 80 minutes of, at times, frenetic activity that these players are putting their bodies through. And they've done that, in some cases, half a dozen times with six matches over the weekend for some of these teams. And there's yet another sh goal for Canterbury. Number six, virtually on the strike of half-time. Charlie Bailey gets his second and three minutes left. Oh, slightly less than that now inside so a minute. And, uh, and they are plenty with some huge problems that they've got to sort out here at half time because it's 6 1 at the break and all six goals coming in the space of uh, 10 minutes. Uh, it's been nothing short of a disaster for Bayer Plenty here. And the scoring may not be finished yet. So Akbar, Akbar with a promising shot. It had some speed on it, but not the direction. So in the closing moments of the first half, got Ted. It's a little back heel. Um, and there is number seven. They are coming thick and fast at the moment. And Bayer Plenty with no answer. Goal number seven going to Finton Montgomery. And wow. Seven goals in 11 minutes.
Jokes head. Thinks he might have a little run on his own. Here's the man who just scored the seventh goal and uh, fires a pretty ferocious shot in as well. But the hooter sounds much, I'm sure, to the relief of the Bay of Plenty bench, coach and players. But a lot of damage done in the second 10 minutes of that first half. Seven goals in the 9th, 11th, 12th, 15th, 18th, 19th and 20th minute. Seven goals in about 12 minutes. And the sole reply from Bay of Plenty was a goal in the 13th minute to Thomas McMillan. But at half time, uh, the score speaks for itself. Canterbury in complete control ahead by seven goals to one. has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. We believe in supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years.
So underway in the second half of this match between Bayer Plenty in the blue and black stripes and Canterbury, who are completely in control here by seven goals to one. That was their half-time score, and here was one of their key players, Brazilian player Ribeiro, Daniel Ribeiro, doing some good work in defence there, but uh, scored probably the best individual goal that certainly we've seen over the weekend when he ran virtually the entire length of the court and then just unleashed this powerful volley. But a good shot fired in there by Bayer Plenty to start the second half. But don't need a lot more of that. It's Vincent Callister who decides the safest thing is just to push it back to his goalkeeper. But uh, seven goals to one down, you'd think that probably all they can play for is some pride here. Um, only the one goal to show for their efforts in the first half. But as I said on a couple of occasions, they should have had more than one goal. They did enough in the first 10 minutes to create at least two or three scoring opportunities, which they in the end just let slip by some shoddy finishing work to some good constructive play that they've put together up court. They've got a good passing game, good understanding, but uh, we should also give some credit to those Canterbury defenders who did a very good job. Big powerful men and there's one of them. Mitchell, Samuel Mitchell firing that at the goal but far too wide. And so nothing eventuates from it. Callister. No one anywhere near him there quickly just possessed of the ball by the Canterbury defence. scoring sheet in the first half and a lovely little dribble there and beats his man comprehensively another scoring opportunity here here's here he is this man Ribeiro again look at this beats a couple of defenders with his footwork number 10 for Canterbury keep the eye and there he is in the middle of the screen Daniel Ribeiro Bailey so many big powerful men in their side Bailey, Mitchell, Richards, Ribeiro Ribeiro beats one, beats two and there it is it's only taken two and a half minutes Canterbury add to this escalating tally of goals. And Daniel Ribeiro with some brilliant footwork beat two or three defenders close to the nets and then laid the pass on. And the goal had an air of inevitability about it once Ribeiro beat those two defenders. Now Carter, the top goal scorer for Bayer Plenty, trying to conjure up something there but without any success. Roadner does well with his left foot to find Richards. And sailing into touch. Bailey gets away from one. 
That's why Catherine Bayer played it. It's possessing the big Canterbury pivot. Ramos, captain of the Bay of Plenty side. And must be wondering what, if he can do to stem this tide and then try and get some scoring action themselves. But at the moment, they're just trying to hold Canterbury off. And that's proving very difficult. And if Canterbury can take this sort of form into the finals, and it's almost certain, I think, with this win, that they will finish in the top four uh, they will I think, approach that weekend in Wellington with a lot of confidence because these big men of theirs are using their speed and their power to very good effect more so than they've we've seen in, in the, the other matches this weekend and still not able to find the back of the net Ma, so two or three chances today, but the finish not there. And what's the call? And one of the a very fine example of sportsmanship from the Canterbury player, I think it's uh, Jacob Grobner who's calling out to the referee that it wasn't a foul. It wasn't a foul, but um, the referee saw it differently. Well, his word is final. can be a foul, of course, even if there isn't any malicious intent, and I think that's what uh, the referees probably ruled here. Priest, long way from home, but quite a little push up the court to Finley to Amar Akbar. Too deep. So the urgency really has gone out of this match with that 8-1 uh, scoreline with 15 minutes to go. Mitchell again. Smart play from the Canterbury goalkeeper in the first place who saw Gopset unmarked at the opposite end of the court and threw a very accurate long ball straight to his feet and then gops it just bounced it into the back of the net it's 9-1 Paris just a bit too casual there, nearly conceded an own goal. Gopset looking for a second, there he is. Five on his jersey, Finn Gopset. In the scoring sheet here in the second half of this match. Conjure up here from Lee Cotton with a nice through ball, but no finish again. That's been the tale of woe for Bayer Plenty, creating opportunities, but uh, just not being able to find the net. Space on the court now for both teams, really, with the t intensity gone out of this match. The result now, of course, a foregone conclusion.
referee indicating where he wants that throw in to take place. So Ollie Harris. Back to Mong Ma. And his Captain Mario Ramos doing a good job, but he's suffered a bit of a knock as he goes down. So there will be a stoppage here while the captain of the Bay of Plenty Surge gets some attention. Didn't look anything too ominous at the time when he collided with one of his opponents. But he's staying on the court anyway. We're starting play with the kick in. And a shot fired in there from uh, Mong Mok Ma. But to, to no avail. Harris. And Mario Ramos not showing any signs of that knock that he suffered a minute or so ago. Trying the long high shot, but way over the net did it go and so he tries again You'll never score a goal when you're kicking the ball that high Mitchell trying this tactic again which worked well last time and again he finds Gopset, who turns and gives the thumbs up sign to his goalkeeper for a, a brilliant throw from 40 metres away, right on the spot. And Gopset able to make something of it and nearly made something of that as well. So it's just a question, really, of how many more goals can Canterbury score here, or how many more do they want to score? Again, he's been seeing a lot of ball in the second half, and uh, that'll be a foul against Dolly Harris for the foot trip. And Finley Cotton. wanting them five metres back in direct free kick by the look of it. Swivel and a kick from Gopset and it's a second shot at it but uh, both astray. Kawa, this little fleet footed Japanese player, again with a little touch, too simple, too easy. And just the astute, clever thinking there of Kosei Ikawa, Japanese player number seven in the Canterbury side. He just stopped with gentle pass to his teammate who just hammered it into the back of the net. But all the credit goes to Osawa Okawa who scored a brilliant goal in the first half and has played a very big part in Canterbury recording their 10th goal of the match. Three so far in the second half to add to their seven in the first. Clash of bodies there but nothing with any malicious intent but free kick anyway to Bayer Plenty, McMillan, the one Bayer Plenty player today that is on the score sheet. Good run from Mark Zimmerman there up the 
centre of the court. Oh, very casual, isn't it, all of a sudden for Canterbury when you're up by 10 goals to one. And Sam Richards just uh, ambles in and <laughs> fires a shot. And nowhere near the goal. And Priest with the restart to McMillan. Thomas McMillan. With a fairly aimless kick that uh, no one, not even his teammates or the Canterbury players, were terribly interested in. Hamish Mitchell goes fetching the ball. Sam Richards with the restart. Opportunity here for Zimmerman to stop just when he looked as if he was in full flight to let go with the foot volley. Millen playing the role of Fixo at the moment at the back there. Now the ball loose. Opportunity here for by a plenty as uh, Guillaume tries to get round his opposite number but can't. Zimmerman again. Laying it on for Oikawa. And every time he's on the ball at Oikawa, something exciting happens. He's got speed, vision, and a very quick mind. Priest with another aimless kick. That's two in two minutes. And his body language, there he is, number two, in the centre of the picture there. Looks like he's just had enough. Here's Okawa again. Gets away from one. And just sees the ball trickle out. But uh, he did ma there for dinner. How do we get the uh, free kick as well for the tackle on Ma? Richards. Richards going on his own. Still going, Richards. Richards finally, uh, I thought he was going to have a shot, but uh, to run over the goal line. But uh, he's given the corner to Canterbury. Zimmerman. Kick that would have done justice to great DB Clark, finished up in the rafters somewhere, from about 50 metres away. Mervyn. Trying to get away from Montgomery. Now, Mitchell. Trying something different that time, the header. And it uh, wouldn't be a thought of pride to see Mitchell sort of get into the swing of things and leave his goalkeeping duties behind and play a sort of fifth man role here. Because he's absolutely unemployed at the moment. Has been for most of the second half, which is now 10 minutes old. Miller again trying the long ball, and they are just way off the mark. Frittering away position. position. Zimmerman finding Montgomery, but into touch it goes. So a fairly predictable, prosaic look and feel about this match now with the result beyond any doubts. Ten goals to one in favour of Canterbury. And it looks like they might have run out a bit of, a, a bit of effort as well. And now Priest way out of his goal. Richards trying to avoid Daniel Watson does so. And uh, one of the few opportunities that uh, Bayer Plenty have had inside the Canterbury half. And giving chase was Montgomery, but um, ball got away from him as well. But not a lot of constructive footsore unfolding here in front of us, which not to be... I suppose unexpected with a scoreline like 10 1. Oh, 
Barbero getting a few more minutes. He's back on the field, number 10. There's more and nothing on. series of aimless kicks at the moment coming from uh, these uh, deflated and innovated Bay of Plenty players. They didn't have very little energy and the world is supposed to win understandably gone when you're down by nine goals but you know, there still is the old cliche of course of personal pride that they should play for and certainly 10-2 or 10-3 looks better than 10-1 but nice work from Ramiros the captain and yes, punching the floor. Number four, Vincent Callister. Still shaking his head there. With that uh, very good ball that was laid on for him by his captain. And he could make nothing of it. Ribeiro. Mongma there with his um, brother Kio. Ramos, the captain. Carter. And opportunity here again for Bay of Plenty. And what must they do? to find the net two players with opportunities there in a space of a few seconds and both opportunities frittered away and I guess that explains why it's 10-1 to the opposition Powerful shot again. He has got by far the most lethal boot, I think, in New Zealand futsal. When he unleashes, as he did then, it's almost hard to follow the path of the ball at the speed of light. Here he is again, but uh, tangled with the surge defender and has lost the ball. Just under eight minutes of the match remaining. Rivero. up for a shot on goal there the three of them and hardly anyone back there for they are plenty but I think an indication of the fact that the will has gone out of the effort of the Canterbury players as well up by nine most of them have probably a pretty exhausting weekend so they'll be keen to get into the showers and finish this tournament on a high note, which they almost certainly will do, up by 10 goals to one. There's some perspiration wiped off the floor. Ah, he starts play. Akbar. The referee, yes, towards a free kick to Bay Plenty after that tackle on the captain of the surge, Mario Ramos. Mm. Not 
going to have a shot himself. Couldn't blame him if he did at this point in time and couldn't imagine he would have done any worse than that. Fairly average attempt from way out wide from the free kick. Mitchell again. Rather likes this uh, long ball, but this time he doesn't find his teammate. Karastic trying to get in front of him, Yinis, but unable to do so. Grobner across to Ribera. Beautiful pass from Ribera here. Look at the speed and well done from Priest, but uh, not for the first time today. He doesn't manage to take the ball cleanly. And as it spills out of his hand, there waiting for the ball was Innes who put it away. It's 11 to 1. Fourth goal of this second half for Canterbury. Hard to believe that halfway through the first half of this match, it was nil all. And then in the ninth minute, uh, the scoring started. And it's just been a train of goals that have been running up and down the court since then. 11 goals in the space of 24 minutes. Mitchell He's seen very little of the action in the second half and look at the space that was there for Canterbury but unfortunately Charlie Bailey couldn't make the most of it and so the opportunity was lost but the players just going through the motions now I think on both sides and <laughs> Mitchell and nearly paid off. He does seem to have a very good understanding. Uh, once again with uh, Gobsett, it gives him the thumbs up on the money with that throw from 40 metres away. And Carter couldn't keep it in play. So position back with Canterbury. Upset and Priest coming way out of his goal and committed to the shot, and so he just didn't try and do anything fancy, he just put his boot to it. Of course, he can't pick the ball up once he leaves that um, defensive circle. Cotton passing and cutting Carter. Another pass going into no man's land from a surge boot. There's Mitchell. Carter for bad plenty. Carter. Callister. Mitchell and just couldn't quite lay the pass on for his man screaming up the center of the court Finley Cotton the Englishman in the Canterbury team under five minutes left in this second half Bailey Got upset, got upset, thinking about a run on his own, then decided no. Send it back to Mitchell. Got upset. Gets away from one player and gets possession as well. Some more problems here for Bayer Plenty. <laughs> Mitchell decides he'll just throw his foot at that ball on the fly. But 
but um, misses the goal by the proverbial mile. And Priest in a hurry to restart play. More. So about the best thing that's happened for Bayer Plenty in the second half is the odd corner, and here's another one of them. As Carter goes after that ball with a heavy boot. Bailey. Another opportunity Ooh. gone begging there for Bayer Plenty from the volley from the boot of Emma uh, Akbar. Got set, looking some support there from Bailey. But um, with a Bayer Plenty boot, and so drops it again. With the kick in. And kick there from the goalkeeper at the other end and gops it that combination again although he didn't <laughs> he didn't take the initial kick this time from the goalkeeper Mitchell but um, it was laid on for gops it and he hammered it away and that's goal number 12. registered on the score sheet here but uh, it certainly was a goal if they restarted the halfway so yep. uh, it's definitely 12 goals to one five second half goals now to add to the seven from the first half so it's been an unrelenting performance from Canterbury could have understood I suppose if they'd rested on their laurels a bit the match was as good as one of course at half time when they're up by seven goals to one but uh, they've added another five in the second half and haven't conceded any. And their job has just been made a lot easier, admittedly, in the second half by Bayer Plenty. Just kind of nothing in the tank, to quote a, a recent expression from a politician. Um, and Canterbury have just been unrelen uh, unrelenting in their determination to score goals. Some of them have been just a wee bit too easy. Defence falling apart and presenting many opportunities. And Canterbury happy to take them. And here's one man who has made the most of his time on. What Carwell again laying the ball on there for Fintan Montgomery into the last two minutes of this match. And I think all and sundry will be very pleased when they hear that hooter. Canterbury players given plenty in this half and have had much the better of it and a furious shot there coming from Hamish Mitchell from inside his own half come up the court and was goalkeeper on goalkeeper there as he smashed that ball and his opposite number Chris Priest coming out and that really would have stung his hands I think because it was a powerful shot from Mitchell now, Cock with a shot. Stopped by Ma.
Canada. We're just happy to, I think, just kick the ball around here to count the clock down inside the last minute. But, um, Montgomery. Uh, plenty of small consolation, I suppose, if they can have the final say, but no. The shot is a strike. Good defence and Canterbury not letting up here on attack or defence. And Oikawa um, tries to chip the goalkeeper. And wow, that ball goes high in the air. Goes up into the rafters. And the players are wondering what's going to happen. And it's going to start by the look of it with the Canterbury restart. They're hitting the roof, which is not permissible. Richards. And the last rights of this match. And Priest trying to pinch one back. And they nearly do <laughs> as well as scramble in front of the goal. But um, it's just not uh, Bay of Plenty's day. It's been anything but a day of plenty for Bay of Plenty. Uh, thoroughly beaten by 12 goals to one by Canterbury United. No one, I think, saw such a one-sided result coming from two teams not that far apart on the points table. But Canterbury took nine minutes to kind of settle into their game. And at that point, uh, the goal started to come. Seven in the first half and a further five in the second spell in the second, sixth, eighth, thirteenth and seventeenth minute. So coming at regular intervals, 12 goals basically in the space of 31 minutes. And that's how it finished. Canterbury United defeating Bay of Plenty Surge by 12 goals to one and Canterbury take the three championship points. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.
Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. And welcome back to the Trust Arena here in Henderson for our final telecast of this Ford Futsal Super League National One Series. It has played out here over the last three days. This match between, without doubt, the best side in the country, the Canterbury United Pride, Futsal Women's Super League side, and their opponents, probably the nearest to them, actually, in terms of ability, the Papakura City side. It will take a very good effort indeed from Papakura to prevail over this a very strong Canterbury side. The Canterbury team, this is the starting lineup. Scarlett Gray, Samantha White, Alina Firth, Lily Fisher and Petra Bike. And their opponents, the starting lineup is uh, Daniel Bradley in goal. Shivanti Anthony, Emily Gillen, who will captain the side. Uh, Abby Venmore and Kat Pretty completes the starting lineup. Can't be proud who arrived here on the middle of the weekend, so they've only played two matches because they haven't had their season interrupted by uh, cyclonic conditions and therefore have been able to play all of their scheduled matches. The two matches that they have had here this weekend have um, resulted in victories over Papakura and Waikato uh, Bay of Plenty. Bay of Plenty in the blue strip and number 15, the Cat Pretty, to start this final match of the Women's League. Canterbury quickly dispossessing Bay of Plenty of that uh, early ball and managed to extract by the look of it a corner from the very first phase of the match. Start there by Papakura. As uh, Shaventi Anthony comes up to take the corner. And that's how you get rid of the ball when it's in the middle of one of those sandwiches. But you make sure that the one sandwich next to it isn't going to receive the ball, as we've seen a couple of times. And it's a very long process of trying to work out where, amongst all these advertising hoardings, the ball finishes up. But um, his experience is showing these players how to get it back into play quickly. So Canterbury not in their traditional red colours. Unbeaten in their eight matches so far this year, having scored 58 goals in eight matches. So they average over seven goals a match and have only conceded eight as well in those eight matches so they have a remarkable record there's no one else in the league six teams in the women's national super league uh, but none of the other five teams are anywhere near them in terms of the performance or statistics Papakura who are currently in third place but 12 points behind with a record of four wins and two losses and they've only scored 21 goals compared to the 58 by Canterbury. Admittingly, Papakura 
have got two games in hand, but uh, never going to close that gap of 37 goals in two games. So it's an indication of the scoring ability of this uh, Canterbury side. And their key striker, Serena Patel, starting on the bench. So the coach of the Canterbury side, Roman Macker keen to get as many of his younger players as much game time as possible here this is their final match of the weekend quite start in the first minute Apakura have a pretty good tournament here so far they 5-0 one against Southern United uh, beat to Central by Four goals to one. But, uh, lost to Capital and also to uh, Canterbury United. 3-2 in an earlier clash between these two teams. And there's the first goal of the match. Coming from the boot of uh, Lily Fisher, and it's only taken a minute and 12 seconds before Canterbury have once again established their superiority and displayed their credentials. Fairly soft goal, you'd have to say. Some pretty average defence there from Papakura. Doesn't all go well for the woman from the bay. Start. Anthony has a long shot which shaves the crossbar. Scarlett Gray, the goalkeeper for Canterbury. And the opposite number there in the blue strip is uh, Daniel Bradley for Papakura. The defending champions, Papakura from last year. But they're clearly the favourites when these playoffs get underway will be the side in black in a couple of weeks time in Wellington comes uh, Papakura trying to mount but look uh, no one there at all not a blue jersey to be seen or a blue strip to be seen anywhere near that part ball Lily Fisher the goal scorer oh, nearly had it intercepted there by Anna Reddy Williams has gone hunting for the ball down the far end of the board here at Trust Serena. And play finally gets underway. Ada James, who had a good game this morning for Papakura. And here she is again, James. Confessing support, finds it in the form of Sophie Williams. We didn't to press high even in this early part of the game, and so it cuts down the time that the Papakura defenders have to make a decision where to position the ball. Samantha White. Cross 
just got around a Firth. And things all really pretty quiet at the moment. So Ella James again back. Searching and scrutinizing the horizon, looking for a blue and white striped jersey, and she finds one in the form of uh, Jennifer Bremner, who comes through and across the goal mouth it goes, but um, Upper Kurit couldn't get a hand to that or a foot to that ball. Jordana Bremner had a good chase, but uh, it had a loot of it. Bike. Bike again. But uh, no success. Subs made by the Canterbury coach. Still no sign of uh, Serena Patel, this brilliant, uh, skillful attacker that Canterbury possesses. Brittany Lee Nicholson, the captain of the Canterbury team, has come on for the first time there in the number 11 jersey. 18, Amber DeWitt also coming on here after five minutes of this first half. A fairly forlorn attempt at goal from somewhere near halfway by Dorothy Yick. Play restarted with Daniel Bradley. Good throw finds the opposite to, or a teammate Hannah Reddy but uh, and to touch it goes so Jordana Bremner will restart play opportunity here for Papakura a long shot attempted by Ella James but uh, no joy but she does get back there and in the end it's Bradley that has to come to her assistance to kick it out and play will restart position with Canterbury looking for their second goal Back to their captain, Nicholson. Yick. Do it to Yick, but I'm trying to find a couple of black jerseys, which she does in that uh, far corner. But plenty of defence back there as well. Not so much now. And down goes Dorothy Yick, but uh, nothing called by the referee. Bremner going on a little run here for Bayer Plenty, but unfortunately Reddy couldn't get onto that ball. So it remains 1-0. Exactly five minutes of the first half gone in this match between uh, the leading side in this competition. Canterbury United, Pride, as they call themselves. out of the bench for Papakura. On comes Cat Pretty. And the Joyce Barossa, this but uh, very exciting Brazilian player in the Papakura side. Another opportunity here, Yek with a shot. Um, out off the arm of Amber DeWitt and so Anthony restarts for Papakura on the long ball for Pretty finds her now Pretty just has to spend a little time retrieving the ball unfortunately for her the defence had got back but 
long ball finds the head of Savanti Anthony. Dorothy Yek gets her foot to it. Amber Witt having a shot. But good. Aggressive defence coming here from Bayer Plenty. And Anthony again. A very heady player. She always seems to have an option when she has her time with the ball by Rossi. Not quite sure what she was trying to do there, but it's opened up for DeWitt anyway. And here's another shot. And it's unusual to see Canterbury missing a golden opportunity like that. Rachel Brody it was that had the chance, but she's put it around the back of that uh, far post. It must have been a deflection because they do get the uh, corner. Rosso restarting for Papakura. She'll do go through that ritual again. Just try and tries the long ball to Pretty. Looking for some support, but it's very slow getting there. So she's got to pass it right back deep into her own half. Maxine Cooper, one of the key players in this Papakura side, didn't start, but is now on. Barossa decides made a bit of a mess of that, and so she turns it to her goalkeeper. bit more urgency about the player both sides now after seven minutes in this first half. So another opportunity here for Canterbury. Back to their captain, Nicholson, who has a long shot. And certainly the Papakua goalkeeper had to get interested in that. Cooper giving chase for Papakura. Effectively blocked by Brittany Lee Nicholson. Barossa. Looking for Pretty. She finds her as well. Good throw. And Pretty blocked there by some smart play from the Canterbury defenders. So very few raids into the Canterbury half coming from Bayer Plenty so far in the first eight minutes of this match. Going to be hit by one goal to nil. The goal coming in the second minute by Lily Fisher's boot. It's Dorothy Yek. Send it up the middle, but uh, to nowhere in particular, or no one in particular. Barossa again looking for some support. Finds it back there with uh, Lynn Cooper. Anthony finds pretty nice pass from uh, Anthony. Pretty opportunity here for Bayer Plenty. As uh, Cooper make, does well to get there, Maxine Cooper. But no real concerns for Scarlett Gravy. Yeah, Canterbury goalkeeper. Nicholson, the fixo for Canterbury, doing a sterling job at the back there, just stifling any of these uh, would be attacks from. Bayer Plenty and Rachel Brody with the shot on goal but not successful so stoppage here while we get a few more new players onto the court Ella James has come back for Papakura and Emily Gillion their captain also started the match nine minutes ago gets her second shift Canterbury corner. And 
stabbed away to no one in particular. Canterbury will restart from deep inside their own half. As a Papakura were to win this match, uh, they would go into second place on the points table behind of Canterbury who have 24 perfect record three points for a win in this league and they've played eight matches and have 24 points so they're miles clear of anyone else in second place at the moment is the capital side from Wellington with 15 points um, like Canterbury team played eight matches so they're nine points clear and then three points behind them in third place is Papakura so if they could win here today Papakura which will take some doing they will get a share of second place and on goal difference um, uh, they will still remain in third place but um, it would help cement for them a place in the top four for the playoffs next month and Ella James didn't miss by much so I think it hit the crossbar Getting a few more balls deep into their opposition's half now, which they weren't doing in the first 10 minutes of the match. Ella James. Maybe Venomore as well doing some good work. So getting into the game more, Papakura, after conceding that goal in the second minute, probably rocked them a little, although it shouldn't have. Canterbury have. Just got a goal scoring machine on the court and on the bench. 58 goals from eight matches. Next, next most prolific scoring side is Capital, who scored 26 in the same number of matches. 58 versus 26. Give you an indication of the ability. And here is Serena Patel. She's come on wearing the number five jersey. And just keep your eye on her when she has the ball. The skills that she can display uh, quite profound. Georgia Smith also on now for Canterbury, getting her first touch in this match with just under 10 minutes of um, play remaining in this first half. Tell. Just made a quiet introduction into the match. And there she is. Once she gets a bit of room and she goes on a bit of a run. And there we see her. And she fell, but um, it was all of her own making, and so nothing given there. A kick in for Papakura. Direct a kick now. Here's Patel and nearly landed her first goal, but she's finished up flat on her back. I think she's um, none the worse for the wear. It wasn't really a big collision there at all, but um, lost the footing. But from it, they get a corner anyway, Canterbury. There's Patel with the shot, but uh, no power or direction. So the score remains at 1 0 after 11 minutes of the first half. Nine minutes remaining on the clock. James finds the throw from the keeper. Back to Williams. Williams staying on the ball. James there as well. Here goes Patel. Patel. Patel still running with the ball. Patel. And just her speed and her ability to dribble at speed proving very much a handful for the defenders and already having a shot with the left foot been, haven't been too many shots on goal haven't seen much of the scarlet gray it's had a pretty quiet game so far more replacements being made here for the 
Papakura side. As Maxine Cooper comes on. He's gone looking for the ball and look behind the blue curtain to the uh, match going on in the second court. Cooper. Back to Bremner. Cooper again. Far too close to halfway for her to have a shot. And so she eventually gets all the way back to the goalkeeper. Back by a plenty. Come again. Or Papakura come again. Cooper. Looking for Reddy. Finds it. But uh, the ball beats them all into touch. Plenty, but uh, rather undoes her good work initially by a poorly directed kick. And uh, Selena Patel has had her first spell or first shift on the court. She'll take a break. Lily Fisher back on. Scored that first goal for Canterbury after just two minutes. And she is now in the fixo role at the back. Looking for some support. And up putting it into touch in front of the player that she was looking for, Petra Bag. Good run indeed, right up the middle of the court. Papakura, but uh, turn possession. Cooper gets it back, but now speculator coming from number 23, Petra Bayer. Pass there to Samantha White. White goes for a skate. And on this very shiny, fast surface, you can skate for quite some distance if you hit the ground at pace. Pretty. Ready. The kick awarded to Papakura. Jordana Bremner, but to no avail. Bike. White. Bike again. Now ready, he's gone back. Retrieve the ball for Papakura. Doing well, gets the free kick as well. Cooper. Nothing much on from there, so Bremner from inside her own half. A loose ball pounced on by Elaine Firth, and there's her second shot at goal. But Bradley finishes up on her knees, but uh, she does manage to repel the attempt there from Alina Firth six minutes left in the first half and still just the one goal so Papakura can be heartened by that this side that normally gets as I said an average of eight goals a match it's a living off a fairly frugal diet at the moment and a bit loose Bradley and goal there but um, not paying a terrible price for it at the moment Ready going back to try and retrieve that ball so if they can hang on for another six minutes they'll be heartened 
They did hold them to a 3-2 scoreline, Papakura, when they met two days ago. Sophie Williams. Through to Cat Pretty, but back with Canterbury. Bike. Poor pass down the line and so chance for Papakura to come away with it again they've done a pretty good job defensively they haven't really created many if any real scoring opportunities mind you Canterbury as well after that initial goal that came in the second minute uh, also have been a bit poor in that area in terms of conversion Barossa. Gillion. Gillion. Still with the ball. Okay, pretty trying to get a foot to the ball, but to no avail. there that presented itself for uh, Kate Pretty but she got past her opponent but couldn't keep the ball in play in fact the game has become a bit disjointed and scrappy of late and I think again I go back to these uh, conversations I had with a couple of players and coaches this morning and um, how tired most if not all of the players are but the Canterbury team because they haven't had their season disrupted by adverse weather conditions, have played eight games, and so uh, they only were on a pretty easy sort of schedule here of two matches so far. And this is their third in two days, whereas some teams are playing two matches every day for the three days, six games in three days. I get a uh, plenty game or team as one of them has had six games or will have had six games by the time uh, this series finishes this afternoon. And uh, went back on the court for Canterbury. So it hasn't been a truly sparkling display here by Canterbury, but um, given their superiority and their position at the top of the table, and the coach, I suppose, mindful of not overexerting his players. Nicholson, Nicholson still with the ball under control, but eventually losing it. So four minutes of play remaining at the first half in Canterbury. Um, Really concerned, I suppose, that, uh, for all their efforts and domination, particularly of uh, territory and the ball, they've only got one goal to show for it. Pretty. Sophie Williams. Barossa. Pretty, but deprived of the ball again. Gideon, her captain, Williams again. Intercepted by DeWitt, now opportunity here for Yek, but no real conviction in that shot from Dorothy Yek. She could have put a bit more power, you can't help but think into that shot from where she was standing. She wasn't really challenged at all. It's probably a slightly better shot from Yek, but easily picked up and seen coming from Daniel Bradley, the goalkeeper. Really trying to find a goal in the first half in these remaining three minutes that would be something of a coup for Papakura if they could go into half time on equal terms with uh, 
Canterbury Pride. Back on is Shavanti Anthony. And Helen Reddy. Anthony with the kick in. Cross to Cooper who's come on as well. Number 16 is Helen Reddy. They're spending a little more time at least in the Canterbury half now. And looking as if they could score here. If you spend enough time in the opposition half, you must create opportunities. Cooper ends for her team a corner. Just on three minutes left in the first half. 1-0 Canterbury playing in the black strip today, as opposed to their traditional red. And Pat Pretty, and oh, she should have done better there. She had they had caught the Canterbury defence napping a bit. They were pretty flat-footed. And um, Pretty had the opportunity literally from half a metre just to poke that ball into the net, but uh, couldn't get a feet on it. And so Canterbury preserved their 1-0 status. the captain That's a strong shot Anthony Nicholson Nicholson challenged by Helen Reddy but uh, Canterbury win the ball Back to Mickelson, but uh, well wide with the right foot volley. to no avail at all for Bradley under no pressure. Anthony again trying to find her pivot but um, not to be. And White with the ball. Good save indeed there from Scarlet Grey. Dorothy Yick finds Amber Witch. He's got room. Challenged by Anthony here. He's usually pretty solid in defence and Amber Witter I think realised that so push the ball back to her Foxo, Pixo uh, Dorothy Yek but um, her shot well wide Taken away and the scramble in defense there with Anthony again doing a very good job for her side. It's just a minute and 24 seconds left in this first quarter. So, one goal, only goal coming in the second minute. Hardly got onto the field, and um, suddenly Lily Fisher had the opportunity, and it was a fairly soft goal. And Anthony still with the ball, trying to find Cooper, does so. Anthony again. Saw some space there, but couldn't get the ball for Anthony with a shot and parried away by the goalkeeper. But um, another half chance there for Papakura, and they have been creating these chances in the last five or ten minutes. They probably have had the better of the second half of this uh, first spell, but nothing to show for it. Less than a minute left until half time. Cooper 
a quick look up and see what's available. But uh, again, the pass had too much pace on it. Scarlet Grey. Back to her captain, uh, Pitney Lee Nicholson. And the final moments of this first half. Anthony, Anthony to Maxine Cooper. Excellent work there in defence from Brittany Lee Nicholson in her fixo rule. rule. Serena Patel is on as well for the final couple of moments of this quarter. Pushes it up to Amber Witt. Witt to Nicholson. Nicholson to Bike. Uh, but nothing on. So back there is Patel. Only eight seconds left in the quarter, in, in the half. And Patel. And that'll do for the no, no, they're going to have the corner. And that will probably just about do it. No, there's officially two seconds left on the uh, clock. And so we'll have to go through the motions of the last two seconds of this quarter. As Bradley tosses one long, there goes the hooter. And so, well, both teams, I suppose, can take some satisfaction from this first 20 minutes. Canterbury, because they're leading by one goal to nil. And Papakura, very much the underdog starting this match, holding this champion Canterbury side to just the one goal at half time. has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern, recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whanau where everyone is welcome.
starting the second half. Didn't see much of her, only a couple of minutes of her in that first half. To Canterbury have virtually got this league sewn up as far as the uh, round robin is concerned with this nine point lead over their nearest rivals, Capital. And a little break here while this Rena Patel goes and fetches the ball. <laughs> Just the one goal of the match coming in the second minute of the first half by Lily Fisher for Canterbury. And it'd be fair to say that Papakura probably finished stronger than Canterbury in the last five, ten minutes of that uh, first half. But uh, had a couple of scoring opportunities, one very good opportunity, which they weren't able to convert. And so Canterbury hit by one goal to nil. Unbeaten this year from their previous eight matches, so they'll be very keen to preserve that as well. Sending a clear message to everyone else in the league that if you want to win that, this title, you're going to have to beat us. And uh, no one's been able to do that this year. Abby Wright with an opportunity there for Papakura. And she's got some gas as Abby Wright, and she was showing it there with a really nice run. And, well, probably should have done better than she did, but... Um, Another promising start here for Papakura, starting off where they left off on the uh, end of the first half, where, as I said, they really didn't probably have the better of the last eight to ten minutes of that spell. Patel, back to bike. of the Papakura side, Emily Gillion, starting, restarting the match. Player goes down, it's kept pretty, but there's no foul committed. Gillian again. George Smith restarts. Canterbury, back to the goalkeeper, Smith again, challenged strongly there by Gilliam. So Shivanti Anthony with the kick in. Nicely taken down there by Cat Pretty. To Gilliam. Nice passing here, Abby Wright. Um, you know, fairly tough tessel there with uh, Serena Patel. Here comes uh, Pretty again. Anthony. Gilliam. Nothing much on there, so back she goes to Anthony. Think a nice passing going on here, but not much progress being made. Up the court by uh, Papakura, and down goes Patel. But um, again, referees weren't interested in anything. Starting with the long kick. Run there from Jennifer Merkin, who hasn't seen much game time either today in this match. Here goes right again, using that speed to good advantage to try and get round her opponent, and just about succeeded in doing that as uh, Jennifer Merkin tried to stay with her. She looked very good in the uh, closing stages of the first half. That'd be right, and she's continued with that form as well. Directed pass, opportunity for Papakura and a shot from Gillian. Canterbury just a little unsettled at the moment by uh, this aggressive sort of play coming from Papakura. Patel having a very quiet game. 
her second third shift of the match so far Patel nice little pass it's one of her very nice skills the ability to have slip the pass almost unnoticed to a teammate Bit of trouble here for Papakura Gillian manages to work it away thank you Morrow Jennifer Merkin again and the shot parried by Bradley but not cleanly it's an anxious moment there for Papakura as they make some subs Cooper to Sophie Williams who's just come on Cooper again Williams giving chase is uh, Williams with the uh, Patel for the ball but it goes out over the sideline and play will restart inside the Kirby half Williams and another good attack there from Papakura A quick ball coming from Maxine Cooper had the goalkeeper stretched Fairly forlorn attempt there coming from somewhere near halfway by Jordana Bremner for Papakura, but uh, keeping the pressure on Canterbury here, not really allowing them much room, which they were guilty of at times in the opening exchanges of this match. Bremner again, nicely controlled, Cooper. Intercepted by White. Opportunities here now for Canterbury, maybe. Serena Patel has uh, left the court. Back on the bench. Good work here from Cooper. Gets away from her opposite number and fires the shot, but just needed a little bit of curve on that ball and didn't have it, and so it went round behind the net. But off the hand of the goalkeeper, so Sophie Williams will restart from the corner. So nearly five minutes have elapsed in this uh, second half. Still no addition. Haven't seen a, a goal since the second minute of the game. So that's uh, 23 minutes ago. So an indication of how tight this game is. And Papakura, the longer they can hang in there, uh, the more they might get something out of this result. There by Hannah Reddy giving chase. Cooper again. Loose of player, Cooper. Williams. Trying to find Reddy. She does, but. Uh, well, I think the referee has ruled that it's come off the foot of the Canterbury defender and so a corner to Papakura. Shattering that ball from the Canterbury attack. So can't imagine that Canterbury would be interested in trying to just sit on this one nil lead. That's not the way they play. Uh, they will be frustrated that they haven't scored more. But uh, they found a Papakura a tough nut to crack a couple of days ago when they first played them, winning by three goals to two. And Papakura probably learning a few things from that experience. 
have uh, tightened up in a few areas and it's uh, been a fairly even encounter after that uh, initial goal it did seem that a goal in the second minute well here we go Canterbury are, are off on another one of these goal scoring fists but um, not to be the case Bremner does well to get past two of those defenders back to Cooper and uh, Williams couldn't get on that pass Eddie Wright, Sophie Williams, but, uh, into touch. Six minutes of the second half gone. The back heel and yes it worked beautifully for Canterbury on hand to take that was Petra back and put it in the back of the net that's more of the play we expect from this Canterbury team with their very high skill set and that's exactly what produced that goal and that's a real blow to Papakura who are hanging on to uh, Canterbury and thinking that maybe if they could sneak a goal or two they could win this match but their task has just been made immeasurably more difficult still got 14 minutes of the match remaining but 2-0 uh, it's uh, suddenly got twice as hard I guess mathematically speaking anyway scored by Canterbury players with part of their starting five Lily Fisher and the picture bike Anthony finds pretty so they've got to go goal hunting and uh, pretty quickly now that they're two goals behind Certainly a, a draw was uh, distinct for possibilities as long as the game was at 1-0. But now that it's 2-0, they have to take a few more risks. And that could just open up the game a bit more in favour of Canterbury. Only conceded eight, match, eight goals in their matches this season. Did concede two. A couple of days ago to Papakura when they first met here this weekend. Yeah, Serena Patel has come on. See her there running back into her position as the fixo. The long ball, but try as she may, pretty just couldn't get ahead to it. with interest to see the tactics here of Papakura whether they revert to the fifth player and get their goalkeeper Scarlett Gray up front as well to add a bit of extra punch and thrust to their attack no sign of it so far this is what's happened here for Papakura they have made that change Daniel Bradley has come on. There she is in the green number 11. That's the requirement. And the goalkeeper becomes part of the attack. She has to wear a different coloured jersey or strip. And that must um, be exchanged every time she leaves. So there she is. She makes, takes the kick in. 
scurries back. And then he turns around and comes back again to where she took the previous kick in. Certainly giving opportunity here for Papakura by having the fifth player. And there she's uh, left the field and the original goalkeeper has gone back into her position. Back to the regular formation with the regular goalkeeper back in positions. Papakura seek this the first goal. Only 12 minutes of the match remaining now, but still ample time for them. Certainly to score one, two, if not three. And there was nearly the first goal with a good shot from Gillian. Great back in goal. Just can't get clear of those Canterbury defenders. They're so effective. Heavy right across to Savanti Anthony. The opportunity opening up here, maybe for Canterbury. Given the chase, there's a Lily Fisher score of the first goal in this game. She's gone the way back and here we see the uh, fifth man in action again Katana Bremner Having double as the goalkeeper as well as she spins off back and the change being made again with the Scarlet Grey coming on and Jordana Bremner uh, leaving the court again Anthony tries to find pretty but uh, comes off pretty's boot says the referee and so will be the United Pride side that will restart the match after they've made some substitutions with Amber Witt on and also Jordana Bremner who's got her conventional uniform on now she was acting as the fifth player while she was uh, sub but to right pretty trying to find Anthony but uh, to no avail. And the change is coming thick and fast here on both sides with these players. Tired legs, tired bodies and probably tired minds after an exhausting weekend of futsal. Wits. Yet there as well, muscling her way through, but able to get a foot on the ball. Nicholson to Yek, laying it on nicely for Rachel Brody. She had plenty of power behind that shot, but didn't find its target. Still remains 2 0, so it's a low scoring game. Canterbury, still 10 minutes of the match to go, so just at the halfway stage of the second spell. Morrow and uh, Abby Venmore contested the ball, but Venmore couldn't get onto it for that cool. So the whip again. Trying to find Dorothy Yick. Williams. Cooper. Nice ball through here.
for Abby Venmore, but she couldn't catch up with it with the pity. She had plenty of room there. Not too many defenders anywhere near her, but still can't post that first goal. Yet the restart. Nicholson, De Witt. Back to the captain. And the back heel again from Yek, which has produced one goal so far. And De Witt staying on the ball. And her persistence nearly paid off. Cooper looking for someone to pass it to. Finds Williams. Williams to Venmore. Back to Wright. Williams. But to thwarted that attack. And so it's back where it started from. Yeah. Presence of the full strong figure of uh, Dorothy Yick and DeWitt. DeWitt again. Yes, still got possession of the ball. DeWitt, excellent work here. Nicholson. And a frantic scramble from one of those defenders. I think it was AB, AB Wright that eventually got the ball out of play. But it's almost as if that the second goal has uh, rejuvenated the effort of the uh, Canterbury team. They're just playing with a lot more purpose now than they did uh, in the opening minutes of the second half. Up by two goals still. They'll probably sense if they can get another here now, that'll probably bury uh, Patakura well and truly. Two might be enough, but they'll be feeling, feeling a lot more comfortable if they can get a third. Cooper, Cooper still on it. Yick gets away from Barroso, but scurrying back there was uh, Sophie Williams for Papakura, saving the day. Dorothy Yick, she does have a presence on the court. Nicholson, another who's doing a very good job as captain, and uh, Witt trying to jump onto that board, she did, but couldn't get it past. Daniel Bradley. And tipped away by Bradley, so it'll be another corner for Canterbury. They're pressing high here, and you get the impression that um, the third goal may not be far away. It's a breather here for Papakura as they restart with a kick in down near there. Front line. Cooper. And back there again to save the day on attack and defence. Dorothy Yick is a real force within this category side. The header. Cooper trying to get onto it, but again it's powerful figure of Dorothy Yek back there saving the day for Canterbury Anthony back on the court Across to Bremner Eight minutes left in this match. Final eight minutes of this weekend for these two teams. Papakura, two wins and two losses. Another reason, I guess, why they'd like to win this match. Give them a 3-2 result line for the weekend. But at the moment, um, they don't look as if they have the wherewithal to score three goals against this category side. And DeVitt with a rather embarrassing attempt there. Slides off the side of a boot. Scarlet Gray. 
Yick. Nicholson. Thought she had got away from Hannah Reddy, but she hadn't. on the court and she quick with her feet she will take the corner for Canterbury and the Canterbury coach probably asking his team one more goal just one more goal Anthony a bit of a run on her own, no one really knew. Puts a nice pass there for Reddy. And Helen Reddy breaks the drought for Papakura. Nice interplay between Shivanti Anthony in her role as the fixo. And a beautiful pass that she laid on for Hannah Reddy. There's the power of a well-directed and well-paced pass. And Reddy able to finish it off. Okay. We have a ball game, as they say. Patel. Patel, Patel to Anthony. Made the tackle. And the stomach that attempt by Canterbury. The Canterbury coach will certainly be wanting one more goal from these final six minutes. Only one goal between them when they met a couple of days ago here at the Trust Serena, and that's exactly what separates them now. Bremner, Anthony, and Patel, as she had got onto that. I think that would have been in the back of the net. I'm pretty sure she'll be staying on for a few more minutes while the score remains at 2 1. Ready, looking for a second goal. Right, nothing much on there, so across the court she goes. Off Patel, Anthony with the restart. Or kick it. Right to Brentner, nearly intercepted. By Georgia Smith, but uh, the ball has gone dead, so we start with Canterbury. Well, they're probably certainly good for that one goal, Papakura. They've created a number of opportunities and had the better of the closing period of that first half. Canterbury have been the better side in the second half. As a turn and a swivel there from Frankie Morrow. Showing great dexterity with that. Got plenty of power in the shot as well, but score remains 2-1 in favour of Canterbury. Five minutes and 46 seconds left in this match. Thing. There's a foil there, and another strong attempt this time coming from Jennifer Merkin, peppering that goal, but to, to no avail. And too deep. Papakura coach. So we'll have a few moments to talk to his players and give them some thoughts and ideas. Will we see the fifth player introduced? That's the Papakura goalkeeper with number one on her strip. That's Danielle Bradley. I've seen it deployed already by Canterbury. Didn't produce a goal, but it just gets the opposition thinking, what is their plan? What are they trying to do here? So we'll have to wait and see. But 
They have matched Canterbury very well in this match, and the uh, scoreline indicates that. Just on five minutes exactly remaining in the match. So from the kick and a restart play, Cooper. Didn't quite get that ball heading in the direction she wanted to, or to the player that she had in mind. Let's see. Scarlet Gray. Maxine Cooper. A wall of black jerseys here in front of us as she goes back. Pressing high again, Canterbury putting pressure on this defensive system of uh, Papakuras, and it's working at the moment, keeping them pinned in their own half. And they won't score many goals from there. Firth. Goes to Bayek. Up there coming from Lily Fisher, but one goal to her credit so far in the match. The goals have been few and far between, one in the second minute and uh, only another two since then. It's crashing awkwardly against uh, Frankie Morrow, but uh, she's up quickly. Gold on each half, one in the second minute and one in the 26th minute, and then another just a couple of minutes ago, with about eight minutes of the match remaining. Coming off the Papakura player, it's an opportunity here for Canterbury. This uh, high press that they've put on the Papakura defence seems to be working at the moment, they're keeping them pinned in their half. Cooper trying to do something about it. But couldn't get the ball to Cap Pretty. So they go back in order to go forward. Emily Gillian, their captain, good work. Williams. Ball deflected off the shirt of Samantha White, and so. Opportunity here, haven't had that many. In the second half, but uh, it's there for Williams. And, uh, yes, it's come off the goalkeeper, and I think one of the other Canterbury players might have also helped nudge it into the net. It doesn't matter who it came off. What does matter is that. Papakura have a second goal with three minutes left in the match. So they have shown that when they can get into that Canterbury half, they can be lethal. But their problem is they don't seem to be able to spend enough time there. Now that's what they'll need to do. Their goalkeeper, the long throw, trying to find a cat pretty, goes in and out of play. And so another opportunity here with Cooper. Now they thinking about not just drawing the match but winning it and what a coup that would be to inflict the first defeat on Canterbury this season well they've got to just three minutes to do something like that and a big kick there coming from Cat Pretty but her foot didn't really find the ball but they do get anyway well I think it might have just come off the side of a boot and across the line so they've had the corner awarded to them but uh, rather wasted there with that kick. So Canterbury for one of the few times this year, I suspect, uh, under some pressure here. They've got their perfect record on the line here. They Eight matches they've played this season, they've won them all. Just repeating those statistics, remarkable. 58 goals in eight matches. And that's 
over seven goals per match. But today, they've had to survive on a diet of just two. And a bit awkward there. That, I think, is uh, a corner that has been given away unnecessarily there by Papagura. And they could pay for this. Less than three minutes now remaining in the match. Two all, Canterbury and Papakura. Another corner. And a substitution has been made. And the fact that made two of them, their captain and Patel, is on as well. As, and there's their captain, Brittany Lee Mickelson. Did well to get away from her opponent and still get her kick in. So they got themselves another corner. Where are they going? And the big shot there coming, but to no avail. Two minutes and 34 seconds. Tussle going on there, but ball goes out of play. So back with Patel in the role of fixer at the moment. But they probably would want to higher up the net, I'm sure. And here she goes, trying to elude one player, does so, but uh, comes off her boot. She's a little disillusioned with that call. With a wry smile on her face, but uh, the referee had a pretty good view of it, so you suspect he's got it right. Savanti Anthony. Not a particularly well-directed kick. She was trying to find Hannah Reddy, who was nowhere near the sideline. She was in the middle of the court. So a wasted opportunity there, wasted possession by Papakura. Hard to know whether they're just trying to hang on here for the draw or whether they're going to risk trying to win the match. Nicholson, desperate clearance there from Savanti Anthony, but possession back with Canterbury. Just on two minutes to try and create a goal. They're playing in the right half, and they have the kick in again. Anthony Patel. Mickelson, Mickelson, cleared well by Papakura with the Abbey Wright getting a boot to the ball. One minute and 47 seconds left. Two all, Canterbury's unbeaten record, winning record on the line here. The shot, not a bad attempt either from number three. Samantha White. Nicholson. Well, it has to be a foul, surely, and a free kick there with uh, <laughs> Nicholson grabbing hold of the jersey of Jordana Bremner. And uh, Anthony will have the free kick inside the Canterbury half. Where's she going with this? Trying to find her striker. And nice work there from uh, Hannah Reddy. Just forced the Canterbury player to get a foot to the ball and put it out. So Anthony. Back, Anthony again. Never looked likely, but um, worth a shot, I guess, with only a minute and 12 seconds left. Back with Canterbury. Nicholson again. Serena Patel has had a very quiet game. They could do a little bit of her magic right now. There she is. 
and racing up to try and take that pass, but it goes into touch. So now less than 60 seconds left in this match. Scores are tied at two all. Papakura with the ball. Anthony trying the long ball. Right again. But into touch. Well, I'm pretty sure that of these two teams on the court, it'll be Papakura that will be far more delighted with this result than Canterbury. Defending champions, Papakura, and suggesting that they could be a real force to be reckoned with when the finals take place in the first couple of days of April in Wellington. A lot of tired bodies out there, their hands and arms hanging limp. Many, I imagine, just hanging on for that uh, final hooter, but um, can't come quick enough probably now for Canterbury, but um, Papakura would like one more shot if they could. They've got 28 seconds to try and conjure up a goal here. They don't have the ball at the moment. That's their first problem. Patel, smart move. Getting the ball to Patel, but it's back with Papakura. Oh, wow. No, nothing going, says the referee. It was just a slip on this glassy floor by Helen Reddy. A long kick from one end of the court to the other reduces the elapsed time left to 13 seconds. So it looks for all money that we are going to have a two-all draw here. Well, we did see a goal on the match yesterday which came with eight seconds remaining. Patel. Patel. Into touch it goes. Three seconds left, so it's all but over now, you would think. One last frantic chance if they've got. One long shot from halfway. Anthony, here it is. And an opportunity there presented itself to Hannah Reddy. She turned, swiveled, uh, but the goalkeeper equal to the challenge. And so with a second left on the clock, uh, Papakura couldn't finish it off and Canterbury with a frantic save have emerged from the match with a two-all draw so it's the first time this season that Canterbury haven't won a match they still maintain their unbeaten record but full marks to Papakura the defending champions showing us what they're made of and striking the kind of form late in this weekend that might yet carry them to another championship title when they get to Wellington in a couple of weeks so one goal in the second minute of the first half we had to wait until the six minute of the second half before we saw the a second Canterbury goal and then two late goals from Papakura gave for them a draw so they take one point from the match as does Canterbury who remain on top they're still well clear of the team in second place and Papakura with the one point they've earned here that'll help them secure their spot in the top four and entry into the playoffs. So that completes our coverage here from the Trusts Arena of the weekend's Ford Futsal Super League. We hope you've enjoyed it and possibly learnt something about this exciting and frenetic game. And hopefully we can do it all again soon. This is Brendan Telfer on behalf of Mark Watson saying a very good afternoon to you all.
has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year 
for the last 11 years. Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust, for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.